It's time for Angels Spring Training Baseball. This afternoon from Tempe Diablo Stadium, it's the Angels in action against the Chicago Cubs. Another great day here in the Valley as the Angels are back at Tempe Diablo Stadium. What a fun day we have planned for you today. Actor, comedian Will Ferrell is going to be in uniform. He'll play for both teams. He'll be in the outfield for the Angels at first base for the Cubs. Jose, a little change of pace as far as that's concerned. Maybe a little bit of a change of pace. We thought C.J. Wilson was going to pitch. Got injured yesterday. I guess nothing too severe. That's going to open up the door for Angels first round pick Sean Newcomb from a year ago. It sounds like C.J. Wilson will be fine. He threw off the front of the mound today. Slight tweak to the left knee, but Terry, it's all about opportunities. We've seen this happen time and time again in spring training. All eyes around baseball, not just here, on this young phenom named Sean Newcomb, who is a guy with an imposing figure and also very good, solid, repeatable mechanics. We saw him in action. Real composure on the mound. Real ability to go out there and get fastballs by guys. And also a guy that really works at a great pace. Some comparisons with John Lester, who also, of course, on the big contract with the Cubs. But it's going to be exciting. Mike Sledge so says maybe a couple of innings, no more. But certainly this guy brings a lot for what the Angels are looking for now and in the future. All right, let's move to the offensive side where we've had a nice spring opening for newcomer Matt Joyce. He thought maybe he would be the DH a lot for the Angels this season. Well, Josh Hamilton not in the mix at the moment. Going to play a lot of left field. Colin Calgill is out there as well. The Angels uh, hoping that Matt Joyce can do some things for them, Jose. We know what he's done so far, Terry, is he's getting a lot of repetitions here in spring training against left-handed pitching. Of course, his career numbers are below 200. And Mike Socha, even yesterday after the game, told me, we're going to take a look at him because we know he's more than capable. The more he sees lefties, the more comfortable he will get. But, you know, career numbers are well because he gets on base. And then you compliment him with a guy like plays like, this is the last game he's ever going to play. Colin Calgill, we saw a lot about him, learned a lot about him from the bench, playing every day, occasionally also helping out on the bases. And Terry, this spring so far, he's pretty much implemented every single aspect of his game to let Mike Sosha know how valuable he is with the bats, with the glove, and also running the bases. So he's a plus and an asset for this ball club. Well, Jose had a chance to visit with Angels third base coach Gary DeSarcina. He talks about the adjustments a player has to make coming to a new team. No doubt, Jose. I mean, they have to get used to me, and I have to get used to them. I think, uh, number one, the system's pretty easy as far as being a camp signs. Um, so that's pretty basic and pretty easy. Um, but getting, getting some of these guys to understand how Mike likes contact played with one out and, you know, the mechanics of a contact lead. And when that ball in the back comes comes together in the zone, you have to be on your right leg and you have to be going towards home, home play. I know you've seen a lot of – we scored a lot of runs on – ground balls hit to um, middle infielders playing in just because the contact play was run right. So, you know, getting used to them, I think we have 15, 16, 17 position players that are new, and, um, you know, it's up to me every day to go up to them and ask them, make sure that they know the signs, the camp signs, have them repeat them back to me, you know, verbally and, and physically just so we can get on the same page. We don't want to make mistakes out there. We don't want to make um, mistakes with signs, missing signs, because that affects more than just that one player. Gary DeSarcina, the Angels' third base coach. Well, we mentioned the Chicago Cubs are in town. Of course, they are anchored this year by our old friend, Joe Madden. He is their fifth manager in the last six years, kind of a turnaround specialist of sorts. Joe has been successful as a big league manager, and Jose, there are a lot higher expectations for the Cubs here in 2015. Oh, that starts with the payroll, and the fact that uh, Theo Epstein, who turned things around himself over in Boston, brought what he thought was the right figure in the right voice for a young team and also a team that is expected to win. So this is for Joe Madden. Always welcome home, but certainly, Terry, we know one thing. He is a mastermind, and he is a plus for Major League Baseball. Well, the Cubs were winless until yesterday. They had not had a win in their first seven spring games, but did come away with a victory against the Dodgers. It is a fun day today here. A lot of excitement. Big crowd on hand. The Angels and the Cubs will have the starting lineups and the start of today's game on Fox Sports West.
Giuseppe Diablo Stadium. So glad you could join us here. Jose Mora, Terry Smith on our simulcast on Fox Sports West at AM 830 with the Angels baseball. On a beautiful day once again. Some clouds over the sky here in the Valley of the Sun. And uh, certainly a festive environment. The Cubs are in town, of course. They're always a popular attraction no matter where they play. And Will Ferrell, the actor comedian, will be making an appearance here, of course, later on amongst other stuff that he has. The Angels take the field, and for Joel Madden, welcome back. And Joel Madden with his lineup today, Kristen Orfield leading off as a designated hitter. Javier Baez at second base batting second. Jorge Soler is in right field batting third. Mike Olt is at first base batting fourth. Batting fifth, a sensational young player, Chris Bryant at third base. Junior Lake will make the start in left field batting sixth. Willington Castillo is a catcher batting seventh. Addison Russell is batting eighth. A shortstop, solid all the way around. Good young player. And batting ninth in center field is Matt Caesar. And yes, the Cubs are loaded with some very good young talent. The Angels starting lineup is brought to you by McDonald's. It is a perfect meeting of uh, beef and cheese. McDonald's new triple cheeseburger loaded with three 100% pure beef patties and real American cheese. It's everything you love and more of it. Now available for just $2.49. Well, Mike Soch and his Angels, Cole Calhoun leads off in right field. Batting second is American League MVP Mike Trout in center. Albert Pujols off to a great start here this spring at first base, batting third. Matt Joyce has been swinging a hot bat. He's batting fourth in left field. David Freeze, outstanding defensively yesterday. Freeze is the Angels' third baseman, batting fifth. Eric Ibar is solid as ever. Shortstop batting sixth. C.J. Crone, Angels' designated hitter, has looked really good. He's batting seventh. Drew Butera, Angels' backup catcher. And this guy can really throw the baseball. He's fun to watch catching. Butera is batting eighth. And Josh Rutledge, newcomer to the Halos, is at second base batting ninth. It's all exciting because on the mound for the Angels is young lefty Sean Newcomb. And Sean Newcomb getting ready for his second appearance so far this spring. He's worked one inning, giving up a hit, no runs, has a strikeout, and he is kind of filling in today for C.J. Wilson. Big lefty. Angels first round pick last June, just about ready to go. Angels red tops, white pants, Cubs Blue tops, gray pants. Denorfia, the leadoff man. Here's the first pitch today, and he swings and lines one into right center field for a base hit. Didn't hit it very deep, but gets it to clear the infield, and Denorfia, first ball swinging, is on with a leadoff single. Only smiling right away. He knows young player, a little nervous perhaps. Newcomb's going to be throwing a fastball right there. He took advantage of it. So here is Javier Baez. Jose mentioned this Cubs team with a lot of good young talent in the Lineup today, six of their nine regulars are 25 years old or younger. Anthony Rizzo, who's also 25, he's not even here today. So they are loaded with talent. Talent doesn't necessarily translate into wins. There's a ball that's lined in the right field. But it gives you a chance to compete, Jose. And if you can kind of build the talent and bring even maybe more Ability out of talented players, you're usually in for a pretty good run. And they've had a chance because of their position in the standings to bring up this young talent and expose them to the big leagues at a time maybe when the timetable was not the perfect one if you were contending. Yeah, there's a pitch that's cut on a miss, big swing by Baez, and he's a guy who will take his rips. He's only 22 years old, was in 52 games last year for the Cubs, hit only 169, but he has good power. He hit nine homers in those 52 games. Here's the next pitch from Newcomb, and that's low and inside. Newcomb, fastball. He's been clocked as high as 98 miles per hour. Good slider. He'll throw a curve and change up. He's a big lefty. Kind of build along the lines of an Andy Pettit, maybe even a John Lester. There have been some comparisons there. And, of course, Lester is now with the Cubs, although he won't pitch today. Newcomb only 21 years old, so still very young. And this is his first full pro season. Here's the next pitch. That's a little pop into left center, and that's going to drop in for a hit. So another one that just clears the infield. Baez with a single. Denorfia moves up to second. Back-to-back -back hits for the Cubs, and it'll bring up their right fielder, Jorge Soler. It's probably been a long time before uh, since Sean Newcomb allowed back-to-back -back hits leading off a game at any level. Average 
over 11 strikeouts for nine innings last season in the minor leagues when he got his feet wet. And then at one point during the season, the Angels decided to shut him down. So here is Soler, 23 years old. He's in 24 games for the Cubs last year, hit 292, five home runs. Takes the first pitch in there for a called strike. So that to me is one of those guys, uh, almost like a throwback. This guy goes out there and takes a hack. He lets it fly. Cuban native, very talented player. Pickoff toss to second ball. Got away just a little bit from Rutledge. No advancement by the lead runner. Then Orfeo got back to the bag safely at second. Looked there like uh, maybe Duke might have thrown Rutledge a, ch a change up there. <laughs> Soler, a Cuban native and good friends with Yasiel Puig of the Dodgers. A lot of people think Soler has 30 home run potential on the pitch. He cuts it. That one fouls it back behind the plate. He's certainly a guy that when he gets a hold of one, Jose, he can hit it a long way. I love to watch young players that come up and just let it rip. Of course, I was going to ask some strikeouts, but it's all about connecting. Power pays. That's what they want out of him. So counts nothing at two. Newcomb's next delivery, and he missed inside with that fastball. Good job right there by Drew Butera behind the plate and making sure he sets up in enough so the 0 2 does not get enough of the plate from Newcomb. Here's the 1 2. He missed inside with that one, and the count two balls, two strikes. Mike Alt, who's playing first base, figures. To play a lot of third for the Cubs this season. He is the batter waiting on deck. All playing first with Anthony Rizzo and not making the trip here today. Full house here at Tempe Diablo and the pitch that's outside. So now the count runs full after getting in front 0 and 2 on Soler. It's a full count on him here. So he repeated inside after the 0 2 and then uh, went back outside with a fastball and just ran way too much. Payoff pitch. Breaks his bat. Loops one into left. That's a fair ball. It's going to drop in. Being waved around is DeNorfia. He will score a throw to second. And safe there is Soler breaking for the plate. And safe coming in and scoring all the way from first base will be Baez. And it's now two to nothing in favor of Chicago. These are the new look Cubs and one of the things Joe Madden has told the players you gotta go out there Don't be afraid to take chances and it shows right here Aggressive base running all the way around and then in following the baseball. That's who you do as a base runner the Back base runner so bias never stop bias never Conceded to the fact that he was done follow the path gets himself to run and there they go now the funny thing about that play, Jose, it goes down as a two-run double, but and there's no uh, challenges here in spring training. The Angels might have gotten that runner out at second base, Soler, and then they might have had Baez out at the plate as well, but uh, neither call goes the Angels' way. Was at one point, I thought Soler was done, cooked at second base. Here's the pitch, and that one is outside. Batter is Mike Ault, who's their cleanup man. He's been hot. Four for ten this spring. Two home runs. He's got three walks. He's got a whiff in him, too, though. There's one that's chopped foul over on the left side. Like many of these young players, there's a lot of strikeouts, at least uh, dating back to last season. So the Angels down by a pair. The Cubs have had three straight hits to start off this game. It's not as if the ball's been crushed against Newcomb. Here's the next delivery on Alt, and that one is cut back and fouled off to our right back and out of play. If anything, Newcomb has learned from his first 10 full pitches is where the ball's located. Not, not necessarily in and out, but elevation hurts. Even if he pounds somebody in or out, elevation helps the hitter. Big lefty's pitch. That's inside. It misses. Two and two, the count. Newcomb, who's pitching for the Angels this time last year, he was pitching for the University of Hartford. So, quite a jump from uh, the college ranks. Major League Exhibition game a year later. There's one that's fouled off over on the left side. Two balls, two strikes on all. That's one thing I like. Drew Butero gets on the page and said, let's try something else. So, a lot of fastballs lately. Let's try the breaking ball. 
Might be able to get you right back where you need to with your finish and help overall with your release point with their fastball. Here's the 2 2. A uh, little flare caught by Ibar. Diving catch there, still on the infield dirt. Wait for a moment, it looked like that might just be out of his reach, but Ibar diving to his right towards the third base area to nab that one. That's the first out, and Solaire holding it second. It's a great reaction by Eric Ibar, all star shortstop. He has the anticipation abilities to go out there and have an idea as to how his pitcher is working, and this what makes him a solid shortstop, man. He's just got the instinct. But tear another pitch that. He got in on his kitchen, broke another bat. But maybe because of the previous breaking ball, he was able to get it down a little bit more than the previous fastballs. So here's Chris Bryant. And that one is in there for a called strike. Bryant as highly touted a prospect as there is in the game right now. He's a third baseman. He'll likely begin the year in the minors, but he very well could be with the Cubs sometime this season. He hit. 43 home runs last year in the minors. Drove in 110 runs, and that was between double A AA and triple A. This man hit a ball last year here in this ballpark that's still going. Still going around that batter's eye. Here's the pitch, and a fastball caught the outside corner. So, kind of a neat matchup here. Angels first round pick, Sean Newcomb, against Chris Bryant. Bryant, Cubs first round pick in 2013. Here's the next delivery. That's way high and outside. That one kind of slipped out of the hand of Newcomb. Nowhere close. So the count, two and two. That's for a young pitcher trying to make the breaking ball even better. And that ball pretty much came out of the side of his hand. A couple of big guys going up against each other here. Each six foot five. Newcomb and Bryant. And the next pitch, uh, swing and a miss. He threw that one by him. Struck him out. Got him with the heat right there. And that is out number two. No letting go because of his size. He's going to have the ability to hide the ball well and have the ball explode and get on hitters quickly, especially upstairs. So here is Junior Lake. And what Mike Sosha told me this morning, hoping to get two innings out of Newcomb. He once again reiterated his bulk of work will be done on the minor league side this spring. Newcomb pitched an inning for the Angels against Kansas City on Sunday. Misses high and outside on Junior Lake. You know what? If the pattern continues here, Terry, right after that breaking ball, you just miss. This should be a well-located fastball. Let's see. He's done it twice already. Breaking ball, then a good located fastball. Newcomb taking time between pitches and backing out of the box. At least a foot out of the box is Junior Lake. The Angels bat in the bottom of the first inning, trailing right now 2 0 Calhoun, Trout, and Ujols against Jason Hamill. 1 0. And there's a called strike. Did a good job with that changeup. Once again, good job, Drew Butera, working with the youngster. And getting your work in. Angels have action in the bullpen. Albert Suarez warming up. Here's the 1-1 one, one, low. Yeah, that's why Terry Mike Socha was very cautious to say, well, he's going to be stretched out like one of our regular starters. He said, nope. Hoping to get him through two. And he clearly said, if not, we're going to have somebody ready because he is on a pitch count that is not where the Santiago's and Weavers and Shoemakers are. He's already at 25 here in the first inning. Next delivery. And that one missed high and outside. And the Indians are hoping to get him around 30. So if Lake gets on base, that could be it for Newcomb. We'll see when Mike Sosha decides. Of course, if Newcomb gets Lake here, the inning is over. Three balls, one strike. And the delivery, it's chopped foul. No, that one, yeah, foul ball. Rolled on the left side and fairground, but it hit off the foot of the batter, Lake. So it's a foul ball. Three and two, the count. What are no breeze to speak of? The sun has peaked back out from behind the cloud cover. It's been kind of overcast for most of the day. 
82 degrees at game time. Next delivery, and that one is low, and it bounced in and bounces away uh, right there. It's ball four, and moving on to third base on that one is going to be Solaire, and uh, sure enough, Mike Socia is coming out of the Angels dugout area to make a pitching change. So 28 pitches here in the first inning, and Newcomb will not throw any more. We have a break in the action. Pitching change here in the first. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Farmer John. If you're tailgating under the big A or watching the game at home, pick up Farmer John hot dogs, smoked dinner sausage. You get that authentic stadium taste anytime. Visit FarmerJohn.com for recipes that are sure to be a home run. To get back, we'll tell you about the new Angels reliever, 2-0 Cubs. They're still batting in the top of the first inning on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Angels have brought in Albert Suarez. So he will take over for Newcomb, who ended up going two-thirds of an inning, allowed three hits, a couple runs earned. The runners at the corners is property. Newcomb walked one, struck out one. So Suarez, a right-hander, the new pitcher, and he faces Castillo in the pitch. That's low and outside. Castillo, one of three catchers now with the Cubs, and there's a lot of talk that he could be moved. Well, we saw a team uh, yesterday that perhaps could be looking for a catcher. Yeah, Diamondbacks are in need of a catcher. Here's the pitch, and that's outside, of course. Uh, and it's all related to the Diamondbacks, <laughs> of right. course. With uh, Montero coming over here in the offseason. They also uh, signed... David Ross, he will be the backup. He's reunited with John Lester. 2 0 on Castillo, and the pitch he goes after it, chops it on a couple of hops of short. High bar eats it up, and the throw is in time. The inning is over. So that'll do it for the Cubs. They do get a pair. They had three hits, a walk, no errors, and they end up leaving two runners on base. Half inning completed here in Tempe. Cubs 2, the Angels are coming to bat on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
after a long top of the first inning, we go to the bottom of the first, and the Angels set the bet for the first time today. Cole Calhoun will lead it off against right-hander Jason Hamill. He was with the Cubs this time last year, and then eventually got traded to the Oakland A's, and then was re-signed by the Cubs this offseason, so back with them. Here's the pitch, and that's a little bit low for ball. Fans try Wendy's hot, crispy, natural cut sea salt fries in a cool, creamy frosty, just 99 cents at participating locations. Here's the next pitch. Calhoun skies one in the air into left field. Junior Lake is battling the sun. He's under, and he will make the catch on that one for the first out. Well, that was one guy that, of course, uh, Theo Epstein, president of baseball operations for the Cubs knows a lot about. As you mentioned, he brought him back after trading him in a big trade with Samarja over to Oakland. And one thing for sure, Terry, is uh, you know, Hamill's a guy that even though he's had some injuries the last couple of seasons, they knew one thing from him coming back to Chicago. He's going to give you the innings. He's going to go out there and give it all he's got. Leave it on the mound. Appeared in 30 games, 29 starts last year, over 175 innings last season. Ground ball pitcher Jason Hamill. And the first one on Mike Trout that's in there for a called strike. That's the first time Mike Trout has shown bunt in about three years. Bryant, the third baseman, is playing backed up. And here's the next pitch on Trout that's high and away. Can you recall that game here a couple of years back when Mike Sosa told him, I want you to go out there and work on your bunting today. And he, he bunted three times. Right. Just couldn't get it done. Yeah. But so what? There's a pitch on the outside corner called strike. Every so often, maybe a, a bunt might be in order, even for a guy like Mike Trout. But when Trout's at the plate nine times out of ten, you want him getting his swings in. Takes that one low. Two and two. I recall former Texas Rangers manager Ron Washington saying, Hey, I finally found out something Mike Trout can't do very well. Doesn't bunt. 2-2 two, two pitch. That one is low. So the count runs full. 3-2. and two. Hamill has made one appearance so far this spring. And he was kind of knocked around in that outing. I'm going to guess fastball away here to try to run it back on him. Here's the next one on Trout. And that's outside. He walks. 3-2 pitch. goes low and away. So Mike has a one-out walk. Angels have a base runner down 2 nothing here in the bottom of the first. Albert Pujols will be the batter. I said that because there's a lot of teams that they have somebody like a Hamill that can run the fastball back. Have been doing that more on Trout. He is on full counts just throwing the fastball, but starting it off the plate outside and having it run back and hoping for a good framing job by their catcher. So here is Albert who's picking up his hit so far here in the spring. Six for 13. Toss over to first base. Trout gets back. Talked about it at the very top. A little bit of a change of pace, so to speak, here today. Coming up in this exhibition game, actor, comedian Will Farrell, SoCal native, will be playing in this game for the Angels and the Cubs. Expect to see him in the outfield for the Angels. Talk that he's going to play first base for the Cubs, and that will be coming up shortly. It should be quite entertaining. He's going to be covering a lot of miles, a lot of uniforms today. That's right. He was already at a game earlier today, and in all, will appear in five games today in the Cactus League, playing for 10 different teams. A pitch, and that is a strike on the outside corner, and it's all part of a partnership. Major League Baseball and HBO, and it's a project to uh, help fight cancer. Understand Will Farrell. those of you uh, watching on Fox Sports West, he is here at the ballpark, just saw his arrival. That's great. Oh, 
0 and 1 is the count. Next one up, Pujols, and that one is a strike on the outside corner. So nothing in two. Hamill gave up four hits, three runs, and two innings in his first start this spring. Well, watching uh, Will Farrell walk into the ballpark, he looks like he's uh, already has a sore body. <laughs> he's already scuffling a little bit. Two strikes to count. And the next pitch, there goes Trout. Pitch is low, throw down a second. Ball not handled by the second baseman, Baez, trying to get the tag down. And that's a stolen base for Trout. It's good to see Mike Trout get a good lead and get it going because he had flinched uh, two pitches previous to this one. The more Hamill held the baseball, the tougher it was for him. Now, once he held the baseball a lot, then Trout had a pretty good idea. No matter how quick... Hamill was. Trout had a good lead. He knew exactly what pattern to look for, and he got the base. Hoping to see more of that this season. Base hit could bring him in. Angels down 2 0, bottom of the first inning. One ball, two strikes on Albert Pujols. Driven in a couple so far this spring. Bounces that one right up the middle and through in the center, and that is going to score Trout. He comes in on the RBI hit by Albert, and the Angels quickly get on the scoreboard in the bottom of the first inning. Trail at 2-1. to one. There is no secret to anyone that uh, there are some times in previous opportunities last season where this situation presented itself very often. And there's no movement from Trout. There's no runner in motion in front of Pujols, who, of course, hits, hits into a lot of double plays. So... Here's a prime example as to why it's going to be up to Trout himself and other base runners to go out there and force the issue with Mike Socha and prove to him they can steal off of anybody and change the whole complexion of an inning. Batter now is Matt Joyce, and the first pitch is a strike. Or I should say uh, David Freeze at the plate. Got another change. <laughs> huh? Yep. Deja vu. So here's the pitch. And yeah, that one misses low. All I can say is we hope that uh, everything is fine with Matt Joyce, who was originally hitting fourth. Yeah, because Eric Ibar is waiting on deck. So we had Joyce in the original lineup batting cleanup. David Freeze with the count. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. Chopped on the third base side. Right at Bryant. He goes to second in the bad throw. Gets away from Baez. So everybody's going to be safe. And runners at the corners. Boy, when that left the bat, you thought it might be a double play ball. Instead, no one is retired on that one. And the Angels have something brewing here as a result of the error. Runners at the corners went away. Well, there's one of the things you're going to go through with young players. Uh, sometimes the fact that... Uh, the whole focus may not be there, and the fact that the, you cannot take routine plays for granted. That in the big leagues should be a double play, and that's part of the, what Joe Madden has brought to his ball club, too, is to make sure the young players understand with all the talent you have, you're going to be able or have to be able to help us at this level. It's not an automatic. And I think Joe was very clear with his players in Tampa Bay and how they turn things around by playing the guys that could perform consistently at this level. So the batter is Eric Ibar. He was originally slated to bat six today, and he goes after that pitch and fouls that one off on the left side, backing out of play. Have a news here and an update, Terry, for Will Farrell, who played for the A's today. He played some shortstop for Marcus Simeon. Also played some second base for the Mariner for Willie Bloomquist. Has not had a ball hit to him yet, Will Farrell. So hope it happens here. Hamill is ready. Angels have the tying run at third. One out. Pitch on Ibar low. Ball skipped away momentarily from Castillo, but he tracks it just outside the batter's circle. One ball, one strike. So whatever change there was, Terry, on this lineup, we'll uh, try to bring it to you here as soon as possible. All right. Well, C.J. Crone is waiting on deck, so he's going to follow Ibar, and he's been moved up one spot in the batting order. 
Crone was originally slated to bat seventh, but now waiting on deck, the number six hitter today. Here's the pitch, a little bit low. So the count, two balls and one strike. Hamill taking a lot of time out there on the mound. This has been a long first inning. Angels have a chance to get some more on the board. Down by a run right now as the pitch is chopped foul over by the Angels dugout. Understand Colin Calgill has replaced Matt Joyce today. So we haven't uh, gotten the official reason why. But Joyce has been bothered by some side problems lately. Maybe something flared up again. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch, and that's low. We saw Joyce out on the field just before the game uh, chatting. With his old uh, Tampa Bay manager, Joe Madden. That's right. He's good. Joe, the welcome here to the Tempe Diablo Stadium. But anytime you're talking about a side issue, this early in camp, you're better off taking the most cautious route. So a full count here on Ibar. Hamill has already walked the batter. He's set. And the 3-2 runner goes at first. It's high ball four. Another walk, and the Angels have them loaded. And I'll start with Mike Trout with his patient at bat. Seen a lot of pitches. Aggressive on the bases. Albert Pujols selective enough. And the information being passed along is uh, all based on what the fastball is doing. If it starts in certain areas, now you see Ibar play off of it. So here is Crone set to bat. He's having a good spring for the Angels. Five hits, including a home run. Runners everywhere. A chance to do some serious damage right here for Crone. And the pitch, he takes that first one for a strike. Here's the next pitch. And that one is blown away. Boy, you watch Hamill out there, Jose, and he's a veteran guy, but he doesn't appear to be attacking the hitters right now. Right now it's kind of like surprising. He's trying to find one place in the strike zone that uh, obviously he's trying to exploit and it's not working to his advantage. Maybe, although the fact of his fastball does not seem to have a lot of movement today. And he depends on that. Here's the next pitch. That's a breaking ball. It's fouled back to the screen. Of course, spring training is always a time for players to work on things, and maybe that's kind of the game plan for Hamill today. But in any case, uh, you don't sense a veteran pitcher being very aggressive out there on the mound. Yeah, right now, as he mentioned, early in spring training, maybe he's trying to set something with his fastball and his glove side because he does has he's had a couple of counts where he could have gone to a slider. He hasn't, so it's a matter of getting a feel for that fastball and going with it. Next delivery, and there's one that's cut on and missed. He got a strikeout right there. A little bit more aggressive and gets Crone, and that's a big out for him. So the second out in the inning with the bases loaded. There you go again. As I mentioned, he's got a little extra zip on that number one, and he exploded with that fastball up in the zone. So here's Cowgill, late addition to the lineup. Right-handed batter. It's pretty much what Colin Calgill has to get used to during the regular season. Last minute, you're in there. Here's the pitch. Calgill takes a strike on the outside part of the plate. Saw so Calgill in yesterday's ball game against the D-backs. He was one for three. He's had three hits, 15 at bats so far this spring. Run batted in. Two to one Cubs bottom of the first inning had a lot of pitches here in the uh, first inning over 
50 pitches have been thrown by the two teams in this first inning alone. And in case you just tuned in, Angel's young prospect, Sean Nukem, could not make it out of the first inning. Great, we're going today, Jose. We might have about 500 pitches thrown today. And how many? <laughs> how many changes? Yeah. Uh, huh? We're just getting started. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here's the pitch, and yeah, that one is tip foul back behind the plate. And for Newcomb Terry, it's not a, that he was hit hard. It's the fact that there's some things that we learn every single time you take the mound, and today for the first time, and I'm sure he was a little nervous. Got some balls elevated, broke a couple of bats, but today was one of those days where the baseball found the holes. Yeah. Who holds it third, freeze it second, eye bar at first base. 0 and 2, though, the count here on Calgill with two outs. Drew Butera, Angels catcher waiting on deck. He's yet to get a hit so far this spring. I have a good two strike approach here, thinking the other way. Here's the pitch, and he reached it one and chops it right to short to flip the second. Plenty of time to get Ibar, and the inning will end on the 6 4 fielder's choice. Well, the Angels managed a run, would have liked to have gotten more, though. One run in the inning, one hit, one error, one walk, and three runners left. We want to mention the first Angels hit of the game brought to you by 714 Tickets. If you want to make a hit on tickets, log on to 714tickets.com. 714 Tickets, call today, go tonight. After one, it's two to one in favor of the Cubs on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and five. Sports West. We're ready to go as we head to the second and the first pitch. That one misses a little bit low from Suarez. This copyrighted broadcast presented by Authority of Angels Baseball may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball. Addison Russell on the next delivery chops one just off the back part of the mound and threw in the center field, and he has a leadoff hit. A lot of anticipation down the bleachers right side as Will Farrell will be making the Pairs here very soon. A lot of the logistics are happening as uh, he's scheduled to come out here and play some outfield for the Angels and some first base for the Cubs. He will likely replace Mike Trout in center field, we're told. Here's the pitch that's a little bit high. And this is Matt Caesar at the plate. Sounds easy, but uh, take, take our listeners through the spelling of this Caesar. Well, it's not the uh, spelling of your Caesar of salad. The, uh, favorite uh, <laughs> Caesar, right? <laughs> right, or Caesar salad, uh, whichever way you want to go with that one. Here's a high fly ball lifted into left field. That's Cal Gill out there. He will 
will circle under and he makes the grab. And that will be the out. Matt Caesar, who uh, just was retired, spells his last name S Z C Z U R. Not too many players have double Z's in their last name. Pronounced Caesar. And he's a guy who's uh, fighting for a backup spot with the Cubs. Speaking of Caesar, he was with them for time last season. So the top of the order, Kristen Orphy is the batter. He singled and scored in the first inning. Suarez delivers, and around the butt was Denorfi. He lays off that pitch for ball one. Albert Suarez is a young uh, pitcher that the Angels uh, signed in the offseason. And he was in the Tampa Bay organization for a long time. Knows Joe Mann, of course. Never has pitched in the big leagues. He was at Charlotte and Double-A Montgomery last year. Charlotte Triple-A. There's one fouled off on the right side. Backing out of play. One ball, one strike. Suarez. He is a native of Venezuela. Fastball, curve, and changeup. Seven years in the Tampa Bay organization. And after uh, some injuries, Terry, he's actually very happy to just be on the mound, let alone big league camp. He's had Tommy John elbow surgery in the past. He's had some issues with his knee, oblique problems, so had a battle through some adversity. There's a toss over to first base. Diving back to the bag goes the one-out base runner, Addison Russell. Suarez working from the stretch. Angels down 2-1. We're in the top of the second. Here's the pitch. That one is a little bit low. I'm told that Suarez, besides enjoying uh, horseback riding, Jose, he likes to do a little salsa dancing. Well, that means Joe Madden has an idea as to uh, what kind of steps he has, too. <laughs> if Joe Madden one time brought a salsa band into the clubhouse for the race. <laughs> Yes, he did. <laughs> to loosen things up, among many other eccentric things from Joe Madden. Well, maybe uh, Albert Suarez could do a little salsa dancing in one of Mike Socia's morning meetings in the Angels clubhouse. That's a good point. I'll bring that up. Especially it'd be better if he teaches manager how to dance in salsa. <laughs> huh? So now you're going to backtrack? <laughs> well, that's a story. That he teaches Mike Socia, and Mike Socia has to dance in front of his ball club. Runner goes, pitch low, throw to second, and it skips through in the right field, backing up his trout. And that's going to be a stolen base there for Addison Russell. It's twice now we've seen this spring where Josh Rutledge is anchored over the bag and sometimes just does not have enough flexibility to go out there and extend. Uh, this is a throw that should have been stopped, but you got to get there a little bit earlier perhaps and then try to get that throw in front of the runner. But for him, it's an adjustment. You know, after playing so many games, mostly at shortstop. And what the ball does when it's coming and you're running in the other direction, not to the ball. There's a pitch that misses low on the 3-1, so it's ball four. And the Cubs have a pair of runners on base with one out. So the batter now is going to be Baez. Baez with a single, and he has also scored a run. I just can't get the uh, thought of seeing Suarez teaching Mike Socia salsa dancing out of my head right now. You planted that in my head, Jose. Well, you're a good friend of Socia, so that's a good thing for you to go after. <laughs> well, I'll tell him you were the uh, oh, one sure, who thought of it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I know you were going to go there. <laughs> Maybe we could get DJ Darren Chan to supply the music for that. What do you think? It's easy. We have all tons of resources here on TV and radio. Here's the pitch. Yeah, that one is hit a long way into left field, but it's hanging up and camping under down that left field corner. A little bit shy of the warning track area is Calgill. That ball uh, maybe a little bit off the bat of Baez. 
Still gave it a pretty good ride, though. Just a long out, and that's out number two. It'll it bring is. up Solaire. Yeah, he, like Solaire, does, uh, does not get cheated. And Javier Baez got it off the end of the bat. Look how far that ball went. And fortunate man there is Suarez, who took enough off of that pitch to get Baez just slightly ahead of it. Solaire has a two run double. Here's the pitch with two on, and that one misses. Snap throw to second, and back to the bag goes the lead runner. That's Addison Russell in the bottom of the second. Angels have scheduled, unless we get a few more uh, curveballs here, uh, Drew Butera, Josh Rutledge, and Cole Calhoun. The pitch that's outside and low. This is a big crowd today here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. This place is pretty much packed. Here's the next pitch, and that's waved at and missed. Chasing that pitch low and away is Solaire. You can also see Ibar how close he is playing to third baseman David Freeze. Um, what is not an exaggerated shift, but certainly playing tendencies on Solaire. The big swing. Here's the next delivery. Another big cut by Solaire. He pops that one on the right side. Pujols is chasing. Coming in is the right fielder, Cole Calhoun, and in fair ground, shallow right, not far from the foul line. He will make the catch, and that will end the inning. So here in the inning, no runs, one hit. A walk in the inning, no errors. They leave two. It's like uh, Will Farrell uh, might be about ready to head on to the field here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. It's a 2-1 Cubs lead as we go to the bottom of the second on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Tara will lead things off for the Angels. And Will Farrell has uh, entered the Angels dugout over on the first base side. He's wearing number 19, getting <laughs> high fives from his new teammates, at least for uh, a half inning or so. As funny as he is, it is tough to see him with a straight face. <laughs> that makes you laugh. Yeah, he had a game face on today. <laughs> and uh, a lot of photographers. Uh, Shooting pictures of this. Oh, we got photographers. We got cameramen. We have boom microphones. We have a helicopter hovering above. Lots going on here in this ballpark today. You tear at the play. First pitch was a ball, and the next delivery rips that one into left field, tight to the line. A fair ball. It's going to take a hop, hit off the left field wall out there, and Drew Butera with his first hit this spring, a leadoff double. 
<laughs> Leading the cheers of number 19. And Will Farrell uh, out there to tell Butera he liked what he did. And Butera gives him a little tip of the cap and a bow out there. So Will Farrell already meshing with his new teammates. Hey, you got him a knock. Guess who broke the ice for Drew Butera? Will, Will Farrell. Farrell. Yeah. That's right. Well, I want to have him around a lot now. Here's Rutledge at the play with the tying run at second, and he was around to bunt and held up on that one. It was a high pitch. Kerry Smith, Jose Moden, our producer engineer, Darren Chan with you here in Tempe. It's 2 1 Cubs. Fans, be sure to tune into the Rich Eisen Show weekday mornings. Great guests, daily topics. That's the Rich Eisen Show, 9 to noon, right here on Angels Radio AM 830. Next delivery on Rutledge, and that one is taken for ball two. Here's where you see some of the unconventional Joe Madden defense. He's got his first baseman in on the grass as if this was the eighth inning, and he was expecting a sacrifice. Here's the next pitch. Found off on the right side, back and out of play. It's kind of funny to look in the Angels' dugout. I, th I think the players in uniform today in the dugout right now, they don't know whether to watch the game or uh, turn around and watch to see what's going on with Will Farrell, who's in the dugout but uh, not out by the railing. He's kind of in the back part of the dugout right now. He's got his own show going out back there. Yeah. The 2 1 pitch that's fouled off on the right side. How about Drew Gutierrez saying before the game, my favorite actor, Will Farrell. And sure enough. So let's just say he dedicates that double to his favorite actor. Yeah, he's the first batter <laughs> up for the Angels after <laughs> Will Farrell uh, gets to the Angels' dugout today. And uh, fitting. 2 and 2 the count. After Rutledge, Calhoun waiting on deck. And the 2 2 delivery popped in the air, not very deep in center field. Going back is the second baseman, Baez. He will make the catch in front of Caesar, the center fielder, and that's an easy out. Butera has to hold at second. Rutledge retired on the pop up to the second baseman. Here's Bob Calhoun. Let's pause for stations to identify themselves on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. So here's Cole Calhoun. He flied out to left field his first time up. And the pitch off speed fooled and misses that one for strike one. Our Ram out of town scoreboard. It's brought to you by the Ram 1500 Green Car Journal's 2015 Green Truck of the Year. Visit RamTrucks.com to learn more about the fuel efficient Ram 1500. And we will fill you in on some action in the Florida Grapefruit League today. A couple of finals to mention. Here's the pitch. Fly ball into right center field. Not very deep. Coming over is Soler and he will make the catch and holding at second base is Butera. So that's out number two. Mike Trout will be the batter in the Grapefruit League. Boston beat Pittsburgh 5-1. to one. Big poppy in the uh, Panda with home runs, their first of the year for the Red Sox in that win against the Buccos. And a Tiger split squad hosted the Phillies today. Philadelphia won that game 6 5. Yuena Cespedes, who's with Detroit now, left the game in the second inning. Tightness in his left quad. He's listed as day to day. Here's Trout. Mike Walk stole a base and scored the Angel run back in the bottom of the first inning or in the bottom of the second. 2 1 Cubs. Well, Trout saw a lot of pitches from Hamill in that first that bat you're talking about. Should have a pretty good idea on the fastball. If it's moving anymore, he'll find out here, but certainly also saw the slider. Here's the pitch. Grounded sharply, third base side. That's going to be a base hit. Butera will easily score from second. Trout is headed to second, and the throw there is late. It's a two out RBI double for Trout. Angels have tied up the ball game at two. 
So the second thing in Mike Trout's game that uh, perhaps we've seen implemented here today that he doesn't use a whole lot. The stolen base with Pujols hitting and now jumping on that offering early in the count from Jason Hamill. And for sure, for Mike Trout, one thing is he studies, passes along a lot of information because he sees so many pitches, but that's one area where he continues to say, I'm going to be more aggressive early in the count. So here's Albert, who drove in Trout last inning. He has a chance to do it again here in the second. He cuts at the first one and fouls it back behind the plate. Pretty quickly here, the shift on Albert Pujols. And Albert Pujols was the right-handed batter in all of baseball against whom the shift was used the most over 300 times. And what do we know from Joe Madden? He loves the shift. There's a pitch that's low. Joe, uh, kind of the manager, I guess, who is most responsible as far as making the shift now more mainstream. When he first started to do it a lot, he was kind of like the nutty professor. Exactly. And now, all of a sudden, uh, you see just about everyone going with shifts in the infield. Here's the pitch that's low. Two and one to count on Albert. Matt Lindstrom is now up in the Angels' bullpen. Also another issue, an item on Pujols. He was the one hitter in the American League last year that saw the most runners in scoring position. Drove in 105. Here's the next delivery. Pujols takes low. And Albert Terry, as you know very well, is not afraid to... Uh, Critique himself, he goes, Yeah, you know, the 105 really should have been 120, 125 with as many opportunities as I had. So, well aware of circumstances, game situations, and where he's at. Here's the next pitch. There's a shot in the right field for a base hit. Trout's going into third. He's going to be waved home. Throw by Soler. It's late. He'll score. Alberts brought in Trout back to back innings, and the Angels have a 3 2 lead. What he keeps saying over and over again, too, is Albert Pools put the shift on. That's not going to get in my head. And more and more, also this spring, we've seen this type of approach from Albert Pools. Not that he's trying to shoot the ball the other way because of a shift, just adapting to the situation and how they're pitching to him. Terry, that's now four balls. He's hit that way this spring with some serious authority. Going like the vintage Albert Pools. So the batter now for the Angels is David Fries. He reached on an error his first time up. Pujols leads off first. Angels have had back-to-back two-out RBI hits. Love seeing that. First one on Fries in there. Nothing in one to count. In the meantime, Bill Farrell is getting his eye black. So the game face is really turning more serious now for Will Farrell. That's kind of a tip-off. He's going to see some action when he gets to... Uh, <laughs> The third inning. There's a pitch that's in there. What we were told before the game was that he was going to replace Mike Trout in the third inning in center field after there was one out in the third. So we'll see if that uh, turns out to be the case. Whether or not uh, Will Farrell will play for uh, the second and third outs in the inning remains to be seen, but it will be out in center field for at least one out. And then he's going to uh, move on over to the Cubs side where he'll put on the blue jersey and play for them. And I believe that's going to be in the bottom of the fourth. And we were kind of tipped off before the game. He was going to play first base for Joe Madden, which he could see a little action over there. Hey, well, some, somehow, somewhere in first base, he should see more action. Yeah. There's a toss over to first. Albert is back. Good. Earlier today, he already played uh, some shortstop for the A's, second base for the Mariners. Has not had a ball hit to him yet. Mike Trout in the dugout, giving uh, maybe a few pointers. Got to worry about the sun here in this ballpark. Well, that's what he's probably huh? telling Will Ferrell right now. <laughs> Here's the pitch that's lifted in the air down the right field side, down in the right field corner. It's going to drop foul out of the reach of Solaire. No mentioning uh, Will Farrell, and he's likely going to come in to play 
defense for the Angels when we get to the next inning. He will not be the first celebrity who has ever played in an exhibition game for the Angels. Bruce Hornsby was used in a Cactus League game back in 1997 when Terry Collins was the Angels manager. And Bruce Hornsby kind of at the instigation of our good friends Mark Langston and Rex Hudler, Kirk McCaskill were kind of behind all that. Here's a fly ball lifted into right field right near Solaire. He'll put it away and end the inning when Hornsby came in as a pinch runner for the Angels. That was uh, again a Cactus League game in 1997. Never uh, ended up getting beyond first base when that uh, pinch running appearance ended. We have seen the Angels get a pair here in the bottom of the second inning to take a 3-2 lead. We're headed to the third on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. So we get ready to move to the third inning. Angels up three to two. Mike Alt will be the first batter for the Cubs. And we have a new Angels center fielder. Will Farrell is going to take over, at least temporarily, for Mike Trout. Checking out the sun. Communicating with his outfielders. Had a nice run out there to center field. Yeah, Trout was out there loosening up with uh, Cole Calhoun and then... <laughs> We saw Mike Sosha tell Will Farrell, hey, uh, get in the game, kid. So he is now playing in the game. He's out there in center field. Here's the pitch on Alt. And this is Matt Lindstrom on the mound for the Angels. First pitch of ball to count one ball, no strikes. Well, Alt, Bryant, Junior Lake. All guys that have some power, so possibilities also of a fly ball to center field. Here's the pitch. That one is outside. Lindstrom replaces Albert Suarez, who did a good job. He worked an inning and a third, gave up a hit, no runs, walked the batter, didn't strike out any. Lindstrom, the third Angels pitcher so far today, and next one's fouled off just to our right, backing out of play. Tell you what, Will Ferrell's not messing around, Terry. He's looking around, he's saluting the fans, he's looking to see what the pitch is doing, moving on the foul balls. Pretty good instincts out there. Here's the next pitch. That's foul back behind the plate. Check him out. That's better than some center fielders in the big leagues. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard about players playing double headers, maybe a triple header sometimes in the minors because of rainouts. But uh, Will Farrell is going to play in five games today. Here's the pitch. That one is low. So it's a 3-2 count. 
Yeah, with all the fun, of course, uh, this is all because he wants to help out the cause of cancer research and awareness on the research. So, so nice to tie it in into a sport that he loves. And Soul Cal is beloved part of the country. And on the 3 2 delivery, Alt draws a walk, so he's on. <laughs> My favorite movie, Terry? Will Ferrell? Yeah. Elf! There you go. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's the best, man. Well, what's going on in center field now? He's got cameras planted all over him. They're trying to get every angle. Maybe get the uh, metrics on him, too. So the batter now is Chris Bryant. Struck out his first time up. Here's the pitch. And he hits a high fly ball to deep left center. And this one is going to leave. No doubt about that one. It got over the grass berm as well. Nothing cheap about that one. Bryant, the highly touted young player in the Cubs organization, former first round pick who... Club 43 homers in the minors connects right there. And that puts the Cubs back on top. They have a 4-3 lead. It's one of those a no-doubter by Chris Bryant. He is connected in a year and a half of minor league baseball. 52 home runs and has driven in 142 runs. On top of that, a 428 on-base percentage for that youngster. He's a special player. Junior Lake is the batter. And the first pitch of ball, 1-0. and oh. So that's two. He's hit here the last two springs, Terry, that uh, are pretty memorable. As I was talking about the first one last year, where around the hitter's eye, that ball is still carrying. Two balls, no strikes. Hey, by the way, Will Ferrer got a good jump on it. He wasn't going to run that one down. <laughs> that was about it. Yeah. Here's the pitch. This is lifted in the air into right field. Backpedaling is Cole Calhoun. He's under waiting. And he will one-hand it. And that's the first out. Lake and easy out. Wellington Castillo, the catcher, is the batter. Fans, MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is now available. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out-of-market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit MLB.TV for details. So we've been talking about Lindstrom Terry and his power arm, the power sinker, which doesn't necessarily translate into strikeouts. The pitch alone away on Castillo. And for his career, when the ball is put in play, the average against him, the batting average balls in play is fairly high. Here's the next pitch, and that is a called strike. The Lindstrom right now in the mix trying to make the Angels ball club. Maybe the final bullpen spot. There are a few uh, candidates for that role. Brings experience. Brings a good arm. Former closer. Pitches in there for a strike. Will Farrell continues to play center field for the Angels. There have been some other celebrities who have played in baseball exhibition games. And the guy who's done it the most, but he hasn't done it in over a decade, is Garth Brooks. Pitch that one is low and outside. Garth Brooks went to spring training 1998-1999 with the Padres. And, of course, 1998, he turned out to be kind of a good luck charm for the Padres. They ended up going to the World Series that year. Yeah, and Garth Brooks actually spent times, like, training with the ball club for days. Yeah, he wasn't just didn't make a cameo. He right. was uh, in camp most of the time. Here's the 2-2. Uh, shot in the center field. It's going to drop in, so Will Farrell's going to have to field one out there. Does a good job. Fires the ball towards second and holds Castillo to a single. And he's getting a standing ovation here for making a play out there. And he did everything right. He is enjoying the moment. So are the fans. So is a Cubs dugout, too. It's wonderful. That is outstanding. Castillo wasn't going to test his arm out there, Jose. No, he was not. Farrell went out there to his left, picked up the ball, threw overhand, and uh, certainly got the job done. 
Not afraid. Got in front of it. Good footwork. A nice curl hop, too. He's got a little baseball in him. He knew to hit the cutoff man. He did to Rutledge. And his heart is racing right now. <laughs> so the batter now with one out, one on, is Addison Russell. He singled his first time up. It's 4 3 Cubs. We're in the third. Here's the pitch. That's low. It's mentioning Garth Brooks. Uh, Another celebrity who's played in baseball exhibition games. Mentioned a couple of seasons in uh, the spring with the Padres. He also was with the Mets in the 2000 spring training. That year, the Mets went to the World Series as well. The pitch low. Garth Brooks also a few years later, 2004, spring training with the Royals. More recently, 2008, Billy Crystal at age 60. Went to spring training with the Yankees. Got in a bat in a... Grapefruit League game for them. That was for his birthday. Tom Selleck went to a spring training, appeared in action for the Detroit Tigers back in 1991. There's a check swing, a pitch in there. And in 2002, Kevin Costner played in an exhibition game in the spring and against the Seattle Mariners. He was actually playing for uh, the Mariners Class A club, and they played Seattle. And Costner, in that game, uh, Lou Pinella came in to pinch hit against them. when uh, Pinella was managing Seattle. There's a pop in the left field. It's going to fall in for a base hit. So Russell is two for two. Castillo moves up to second. Will Farrell went over there to back up Cal Gill. Will Farrell's taking this game seriously. There's no doubt. Out there having a good time. And being the peel guy, or as they call him, backing up. <laughs> if, if, he's had to run a lot already. <laughs> With one more hit to him. One thing, he's bringing a lot of energy and just uh, a lot of communication out there. With the fans behind the wall and tipping his cap and with the outfielders. Calgill and Calhoun next to him. So Lindstrom's having some difficulty here. He's faced five batters in. Four of them reach base safely. Only one out, two runs in, two on base. You ever think Matt Lindstrom said, I'm going to be in a game someday in my life, and Will Farrell is going to be playing center field yeah. when I'm pitching? Never. Here's the pitch. That one is bounced by the mound right out near second. Rutledge goes to second, and it's in time. They will force out Russell there on the fielder's choice. So runners now at the corners, two outs. And it'll bring up Denorfia. 4-6 fielder's choice at second base. Denorfia already batting for the third time in this game. We're only in the third inning. It's good to see Lindstrom get the ground ball there. And what is not a very easy play around the bag where you have to really be patient as a second baseman. And Rutledge was. He got the hop and made sure he started with the ball to get that sure out with Ibar moving in so close to him, too. So here's the pitch on Denorfia. He takes it low and outside. More action for the Angels in the bullpen. Right-hander Frank Herman, formerly with the Cleveland Indians, warming up. Lindstrom set, runner at first goes, pitch is low, no throw to second. Uncontested stolen base right there for Matt Caesar. So the Rays have had a couple of stolen bases. We saw the D-backs steal five against the Angels yesterday. A lot of things have been exposed by the Angels, or from the Angels, to the opponents the last couple of days. Chip Hale pretty much just ran at will yesterday against the Angels. The manager of the D-backs and former A's bench coach. And the pitch, that's a called strike. And Matt Caesar just stole that base. He's the runner at second base. He was a former college football player, wide receiver, and kick returner at Villanova. So he knows how to run. 2-1 delivery. Chopped on the right side. Should be an out. Fielded there by Rutledge. His throw in plenty of time. Tenorfi is retired, and that will... In the inning. In the inning, they do get a pair to regain the lead. They had three hits, including the home run by Brian Walk in the inning. No errors and two.
few runners left. Will Farrell coming off the field. He's probably uh, finished with his play as an angel in this ball game. But uh, we'll see him in the field for the Cubs coming up shortly as well. It's 4-3 Chicago on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Fans, don't forget, it's time once again to go around the grill with Albertsons when grilling veggies. Lightly coat them in olive oil before grilling to prevent sticking and drying out. Best choices for the grill are asparagus, bell pepper, squash, and onions. Around the grill, it's brought to you by Albertsons. You're in for something fresh. Will Farrell now trotting behind home plate and heading to the Cubs dug out on the third base side where he will don the Cubs uniform shortly. He's meeting with his new manager, Joe Madden. That, that's a very interesting conversation right there, I bet. <laughs> Little fist pump from Joe. Go get ready. Put the blue uni on now. So the batter for the Angels leading off things here in the bottom of the third inning has been a Wild ball game for many reasons. Is it a seventh inning yet? I don't know, but uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here today. Four three Cubs on top. Ibar has walked his only time up. And here's the pitch. He was around a bunt. Ends up taking that one from Hamill for ball one. And again, uh, we mentioned uh, all the hoopla surrounding actor comedian Will Farrell. Part of a new special from Funny or Die in partnership with MLB to air on HBO later this year. That one's filed back. The project is dedicated to the fight against cancer. And it also honors Burt Campanaris' historic feat of playing every position on the field in the same day. Will Farrell has played for three teams already today. A fourth uh, coming up shortly when he puts on the Cubs uniform. And he will be in a total of five Cactus League games by the end of the day today. The pitch, that one is low. Two balls, one strike. That HBO program that they're uh, shooting today will be on later on this year. Here's a ground ball that is hit right to short. Russell will throw out his shortstop counterpart, Ibar. That's the first out. 6-3 on the ground down. C.J. Crone will be the next batter. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. Like that. Pretty good contact there by Eric Ibar. Stayed right with that swing after walking his first that bat. That's pretty much the type of out you want to see more of from Eric Ibar. Single ball pitcher. 
dropped the barrel, hit it hard the other way. So here's Crone batting, and he takes the off-speed pitch high for ball one. This will probably be the final inning for Hamill. The Cubs have Anthony Carter, Jorge De Leon, Felix Dubrant, and Joe Ortiz slated to see action out of the bullpen. As far as the Angels, we've already seen a few relievers, but uh, Cesar Ramos will likely pitch. Ryan Matthews, Frank Herman, Edgar Ibarra also on the slate to see action today. That one's fouled back, and the count on Crone. Two balls, one strike. Angels starting a little stretch of games here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. We'll see another uh, Mike Socia protege bring his team to Tempe Diablo tomorrow. Bud Black's Padres are in town. Another one foul back, not too far away from the booth. And then Saturday, the Angels will host the White Sox here in a split squad day for the Angels. Another Angels team will be playing the Kansas City Royals in surprise. Sunday, the Angels will uh, leave Tempe Diablo for a game against the White Sox. Here's the pitch. And that one is skied into center field, not too deep. Waiting for it is Caesar, and he will put it away for the Cubs. That's the second out. Colin Calgill will be the next batter. Calgill, the uh, fielder's choice back in the Bottom of the first inning, he was up with the bases loaded, two outs. But he ended up grounding a ball to the shortstop for the final out in the inning. Here's the pitch, and that one is outside. Well, we talked about Calgill, how he has adjusted his grip and the way he holds his bat. And Mike Swisher was telling us this morning that Calgill actually spends time this offseason in... Working with former Angels, former member of the Angels coaching staff, Rick Eckstein, who is now a collegiate coach. And they worked on his approach and holding the bat and the many things they want to see Calgill do, which is, of course, trying to get him to be shorter to the baseball. So Rick Eckstein gets an assist on that one, Terry. Next pitch on Calgill. He bounces one deep on the left side. Diving stop on that one hopper by the shortstop, Russell, but he has no throw. And that's going to be an infield hit all the way for Calgill. So he is aboard. Angels have a base runner for Drew Butera. That's one of those plays where, you, yes, it does look sensational, but with time, what Addison Russell will understand is you don't need to make that diving stop because it's not going to be a play with whoever is running and where you caught it. Of course, he shows the range, athletic ability, which was fantastic, but in order to preserve your body over the years, that's one play that you just... Have to let go and let it go to left field. Right hander against right hander as Butera gets set, digs in. Toss over to first Calgill back. Jose was mentioning uh, Calgill uh, hooking up with Rick Eckstein, David Eckstein's brother this offseason. Calgill is from Kentucky, born and still lives in Lexington, and Rick Eckstein is. A coach at the University of Kentucky for their baseball team, so that was the connection there. Here's the next pitch. That's up and in and misses ball one. One ball, no strikes. They're going back to Edison Russell. What a sensational player. This is he was DPs that for the Oakland A's got him what they needed last year. In terms of pitching, and Hamill, some margin company, so He's uh, one guy that even though he started off slowly last year with a torn hamstring, did what he needed to do to continue to hold that status as a top prospect in baseball. He was one of the players the A's traded over to the Cubs in the Samarja deal last season. You know, that, going back to that play, you know, the situation is different if there's men on base. And you need to knock the ball down, of course. One ball, one strike. Angels hitting bottom of the third, trailing 4-3. And a toss over to first base. Diving back to the bag goes the base runner over there, Cowgill. Hope you're enjoying the action today, wherever you're listening, watching to Angels baseball. Terry Smith, Jose Moda, Darren Chan with you. 
toss over to first and Calgill dives back. We'll get the attendance figure here shortly for today's game. But I don't think this is going to be the biggest crowd so far this spring for the Angels. The Angels have a couple of games that are already preseason uh, sellouts. There's one that's fouled back on the right side and backing out of play. And of course, the Cubs draw very well and have for a long time here in the Cactus League. In fact, this spring, they are averaging over 14,000 fans a game for their home games. Yeah, but there's a fantastic new facility, too. They draw well in Wrigley, no matter what the standings look like. Yep. It's remarkable. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Runner goes. Pitch on Butera. That's low. Throw to second. Safe. Stolen base. So Calgill just speeding the tag there of the second baseman, Baez. The way you talk about Baez, he is a quick tag like I have not seen in a long time. I mean, it's a quick snap. From the knees goes to Wellington Castillo. But uh, very impressed now with twice I've seen Baez just put the glove down very quickly. And in the long run, as you learn to do that and continue that consistency, that's going to get you a lot of outs on close plays. So quick hands around the back. 2-2 pitch. Butera takes a breaking ball low and outside. So it's a full count. Three balls, two strikes. A little uh, Benito Santiago there by Wellington Castillo. From his knees, Salvador Perez does that quite often, too. An outstanding Kansas City Royals all-star catcher. Gold Glover. Here's the delivery, and that one is fouled back up above and out of play. Mentioning the uh, Cubs, and they still draw well, but there's been a little drop off as far as attendance at Wrigley in recent years. Cubs have been in last place each of the last five seasons in the NL Central, but there is a lot of heightened enthusiasm this year. And there's a swing and a miss at an off-speed pitch. Down goes Butera. Struck him out. And that's how the inning will end. No runs. One hit. No errors. Angels leave their fifth runner on base. We've completed three and head to the fourth. Right now, the Cubs are up on the Angels 4-3 on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Mike Trout is back out in center field for the Angels after giving way to Will Farrell last half inning when the Angels were on defense. And uh, 
fans are anticipating uh, Will Farrell. There he is. He's arrived in the Cubs dugout now. Will Farrell's going to bring a different look with that blue uniform now, too. Did a good job, Terry. Got to take my cap to him. Really hustled for the annuals out there in center field, even though uh, got to say he did help the Cubs with his couple of runs. So the Angels bring in their fourth pitcher of the day and we're only getting ready to start the fourth inning. And this is Frank Herman who will take over in relief. It looks like we have a new third base coach too. <laughs> Will Farrell <laughs> is coaching third at the moment for the Cubs, replacing uh, Gary Jones, their regular third base coach. There's helmets like coaches have to do now, too. He's flashing signs down there. No, he's flashing signs with his hands and, and arms, but also he's got some uh, signs next to him that I guess he's going to be showing as uh, the inning progresses. So Herman is set. Here's the pitch. That one's in there for a called strike. Well, going into yesterday's game, the Cubs had not won a game all spring. They were winless in their first seven. <laughs> I'll be biased. Has nobody on base as he's looking at Will Farrell and laughing when he's looking at his third base coach. Here's the pitch, and Baez swings it down and lifts it in the air into left center field. Circling under is Calgill, and he will make the grab on that one. <laughs> That's the first out. <laughs> I mean, this is a movie right here itself. <laughs> he is waving by us after the out right into the dugout. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Solaire will be the next batter. And Will Farrell also has some big cue cards over there. Well, they, they, they have, uh, they're kind of signs, I would say. Yeah. Visual signs he's going to be flashing here. Here's the pitch on its way. So he's flashing the uh, first one there. Don't pull a muscle. It's good <laughs> advice. I was thought I was going to say, don't pull the ball this way. Here's the pitch. That's low and outside. So a new spin as far as baseball signs, literally and figuratively. Jerry, you are in the next movie right here. This is part of it. This kind of reminds me of the uh, days in the minors when Max Patkin used to uh, coach. It was always first base, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> bringing man. back uh, flashbacks right now. No kidding. The old uh, clown prince of baseball, Max Patkin. Two and one is the count. Angels down 4-3, top of the fourth inning here in Tempe. Next one on Solaire, and that ball is well hit in the left center field. That's another blast, and that is gone. Boy, that jumped out in a hurry. Solaire has hit a couple of them this spring, and he's having a big day. It's his third RBI today. We're only in the top of the fourth inning. It's now a 5-3 Cubs lead. Will Farrell saying that was on me. That was me. I told him to do that. Jorge Soler is not getting cheated, man. That was quite a blast. He's a guy a lot of people think might have a very good shot to be the rookie of the year in the National League this year, Soler. Even though he was with the Cubs last season, he still is considered a rookie this year. Well, keep in mind, Terry, the same thing happened with Mike Trout. Mike Trout played a lot of games in the big leagues before his rookie season. Yeah. Here's the pitch, and this is Olt at the plate. He has a walk. He scored a run. He's also lined out. Will Farrell with the sign saying, swing as hard as you can. <laughs> Here's the pitch, and that one is low. I think Joe Madden, he might be uh, responsible for what's going on here. <laughs> you're he, you're he right. Might, you're right. Decided uh, we're going to have him do more than play in the field for us. We're going to have him uh, do some other things for us. Pitch on its way. That one's fouled back behind the plate. And that was when the uh, big sign that Will Farrell's holding up says, take a pitch. And Olt went after that one. And Will Farrell's saying, hey, look at the sign. 
Two and two, the count. Herman is ready. He's having to deal with some of the distractions here and the pitch. That's a low, so it's a full count three and two. So we'll see what happens on the payoff pitch. Right-hander against right-hander. Here it comes, and that one misses ball four. So after the home run by Soler now, walk to Alt. That's the second time he's walked in the game. And Chris Bryant, who broke one out of here, his last time up two-run homer will be the next batter. So, Terry, do you have a favorite Will Ferrell movie? Or favorites? Not quite. I don't know. I mean, I, I always enjoyed his work on Saturday Night Live. Outstanding stuff. Yeah. And I guess if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick uh, the first Anchorman movie. <laughs> Here's the pitch. That one is a called strike on the outside corner. Now I have to watch Elf every Christmas. The family gathering. Got to watch it. No balls. One strike on Bryant. That pitch a little bit low. Infield at double play depth. Outfield not too deep. At least uh, Trout isn't. But this guy has big time power, Chris Bryan. Here's the next pitch. He hits that one here. Will Farrell, the third base coach. He had to jump out of the way. He'll retrieve the baseball, toss it to a fan. See, that was a moment I was hoping to get. Something near him, see what the reaction was going to be. And it came. <laughs> Herman has the new baseball. Counts one and two, and the next delivery that is driven in the center field. Going back on it is Trout, still going back, still going back, and that ball is going to take a bounce and hop over the wall. That's going to be a ground rule double. So the Angels catch a little bit of a break there because Alt would have scored easily on that one had it stayed in play. He had already crossed the plate. They're going to move him back to his third base. That breaking ball by Herman pretty much had hit me hard somewhere. I mean, pretty much the ball just did not come out of his fingers. Ideally, he did not have enough rotation and tightness. And for a powerful guy like Brian, man, that is absolutely beautiful for him to find when he's up there to play with a breaking ball. So the Cubs are swinging the bats. They already have nine hits, five runs. Angels are still very much in this game, down 5-3, but now the Cubs have them at second and third with one out. And here is Junior Lake. Infield brought in. The pitch, and it's a shot foul on the third base side. That nearly got a piece of the lead runner, Mike Olt. With Herman out there on the mound, the fourth Angels pitcher of the day. Call to the bullpen being brought to you by Farmer John. If you're tailgating under the Big A, watching the game at home, pick up Farmer John hot dog, smoke dinner sausage. Get that authentic stadium taste anytime. Visit FarmerJohn.com for recipes that are sure to be a home run. Here's the next pitch, and it's lifted in the air in the right field. Should be deep enough to get the runner in from third. Calhoun will make the catch. Both runners are tagging and will advance. So a sack fly off the bat of Lake, and now it's 6 3 Chicago. Well, in all the comedy and all the funny moments here with Will Ferrell, there's two ball clubs trying to get the job done and trying to get ready for a season, and so far the Chicago Cubs have pretty much capitalized on every opportunity presented by the Angels. The Angels pitchers have walked a batter in every single inning, and in the last two they've scored. So Doing a good job with situational hitting and, of course, swinging the bat. And beyond swinging the bat for a team that strikes out a lot with some young players coming into this game, they've done a good job only with one strikeout so far. Yeah, Steele is at the plate. Their sixth batter of the inning, and he takes the first one for a strike. 
Newcomb, the starter, gave up two runs. Lindstrom gave up two runs. Herman has allowed two here in this inning. The one pitch, low and outside. Angels in the bottom of the fourth have Rutledge, Calhoun, and Trout slated to go. And we'll likely see the Cubs go to the bullpen. They have action in the pen. Hamels go on the first three innings for them today. Here's the next delivery. Lifted foul down the right side. That one is pushing back towards the seats. A few rows back and out of play. Tomorrow, when the Angels are right back here at Tempe Diablo Stadium to take on the Padres, it'll be Matt Shoemaker, his second start this spring against Tyson Ross. Ross had a good year last year for San Diego. Terrific all the way around. Here's the one two fouled back up above out of play. Well, when you talk about the Padres is the way they have restocked everything beyond their outstanding pitching which they've had for years. Now they got a few sluggers. Upton Kemp Meyer. Much improved team very active in the offseason. Here's a liner in the right field that is going to drop in a fair ball. And a bounce around down in the right field corner. Another run will score. Another extra base hit for the Cubs here. And it's a double off the bat of Castillo. It's 7 to 3 Chicago. We know the third base coach is going to take a lot of credit, but all the credit goes to the guys out there in the batter's box and staying within themselves. And there's not been one pitch that has been out over the plate. That has been fouled off. Everything that's been missing out over the plate, mislocation, has been able to be put in play and have found holes. Ten hits already for Chicago. So seven to three, the Cubs on top. Seven runs are the most they have scored in a game this spring. And now Will Farrell wants to talk to his batter. Addison Russell. <laughs> yeah, he is pretty animated right there. <laughs> that was a pretty stern message. I don't know what he wow. has done wrong today. He's had two at bats with two hits. He's stolen a base. <laughs> look good with the glove out there at short. The great thing that they both look so serious. Here's the pitch. And that's an off-speed pitch outside. 1-0. and oh. Terry, I bet you there's a good friend of ours who's really enjoying this moment. You know what his name is? Billy Mack. <laughs> this is right up his alley. Oh, my gosh. He already checked in. Here's one fouled off on the right side, backing out of play. Well, you know, Billy Mack uh, kind of... Knows a lot of those celebrities back home. Right. And so I'm sure he's uh, met Will Farrell. Might be good friends with him for all I know. One ball, one strike. And the next delivery, that one is low. Two balls, one strike. Your number eight hitter. Is up for the third time already. There's a lot of things you're doing right offensively. Yeah. And it's only the fourth inning. Josh Rutledge, the Angels' nine hole hitter, has hit only once so far today. Here's the 2 1 called strike on the outside corner. Well, Terry, the Cubs had not won a game up until yesterday. They were 0 and 6 at one point. 0 6 and 1 was their record until they beat the Dodgers yesterday. And Joe Madden wasn't real happy about the way things were going. There's a fly ball. It's hit well in the center field. Trout has to go back a long ways. He's not going to get to it. Ball takes a bounce, hits off the wall. That's going to be another double and another run. And now it's 8-3 to three, Chicago. Herman uh, might be finished here. Mike Sosha is coming out of the 
dugout area to make a pitching change. So it was a rough outing today for Frank Herman as he was unable to get to three outs here in this top half of the fourth inning. Terry always had the pep talk. Did his job. Will Farrell, Edison Russell got in his face. Got the run in. I guess so. The break in the action of pitching change. We get back. Cubs are still batting here in the fourth. They lead the Angels 8 3 on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Set for play to resume, and Joe Madden has decided to pinch hit for Matt Caesar, and Will Farrell, who is just coaching third base, is going to bat. Very good shift here, too. I love it. The Angels have a <laughs> four-man right side of the infield. No one on the left side. <laughs> the pitch is in there for a strike. Will Farrell questions the call by Rob Drake. <laughs> Farrell wearing number 19 on the back of his Cubs blue jersey and the pitch that's right in there for a strike and the count nothing and two. I don't know if Will Farrell ever expected to bat here today but he's at the plate right now deep in the hole and the 0 2 he swings and misses struck him out and that will in the inning. So Matthews comes in and strikes out Will Farrell, and that'll do it for Chicago. They had four runs in the inning, and they did it with four extra base hits, including the homer by Solaire. Also a walk in the inning. There were no errors, and they leave one. So we're headed to the bottom of the fourth here in Tempe. Eight three Cubs on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
have a couple of changes for the Cubs. The new pitcher is Felix Dubron. And they have a new first baseman, and that is Will Farrell. So after pinch hitting, Will Farrell will stay in the ball game, take over at least for this half inning for Mike Paul over there at first base. So a good front buddy from Elf has uh, been everywhere, Terry. He's been uh, center field for the Angels. He's been a coach, and now he's at first base. So, you know what? He's getting closer to real game action here, first baseman. We'll see if there's some throws that he has to handle. Maybe there might be a ground ball or a liner up the first base side. Yeah, this where you don't take your eyes off the ball. So Rutledge will be the first batter up for the Angels against the left-hander Felix Dubron, who spent time with the Red Sox and the Cubs last year. And the lefty's first pitch. That one uh, pitch that misses. And hey, they were going to uh, test uh, Will Farrell right there with Rutledge, the bunt, huh? Uh, was showing some signs of bunting. <laughs> that brings uh, Will Farrell in a little bit over there at first base. Here's the pitch. Lifted in the air into left field. Backpedaling is Lake. He is there waiting and will squeeze it for the out. One away. Pitching change here in the bottom of the fourth inning being brought to you by Irvine Auto Center's March Markdown Madness. Over 5,000 new and used vehicles to choose from. Huge markdowns all month long. Shop online at IrvineAutoCenter.com. Visit them where the five meets the 405 at Lake Forest Drive in Irvine. And now, what a Farrell uh, heading off the field. He, uh, what are they doing out here? Uh, what are they doing to Buddy? See ya, Buddy. Well, he's got another game to attend, Jose. Right. He's on a tight window right now. Three more games to appear in before the day's over in Arizona. Pitch on its way. That's fouled off on the left side by Cole Calhoun. Angels are trailing the Cubs. It's 8-3, bottom of the fourth inning. The score update brought to you by Experian. Get your credit swagger on at Experian.com. Here's the pitch. Cole Calhoun, who's gone over two, a couple flyouts, takes that one for a ball, one and one. Lefty lefty matchup. Dubrant with the next pitch. Fouled back behind the plate. Let's pause for stations to identify themselves on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. A 1 2 on Cole Calhoun. It's a breaking ball that misses. Dubrunt, fastball, sinker, cutter, curve. Always had a good changeup. Four and five record last year as both a starter and reliever ERA was over five and a half. Here's the next delivery. That is a breaking pitcher misses on Cole Calhoun. He's always had the stuff. It's all matter, Terry, just putting it all together. He's got the size. Also, the health issues is the one thing they want to see him just go out there and have a full season and see what he can bring. The pitcher who's had some knee problems in the past. 3 2 delivery. Uh, swing and a miss, and he threw that one by. Cole Calhoun struck him out. So that's out number two. Numbers on their starter, Jason Hamill. Gave him three innings today. He gave up five hits, three runs, two earned, walked two, struck out two. Here's Trout who's having a nice day. Scored two of the three angel runs, has driven in the other. He has a double. He's walked. He's also stolen a base. Pitch from Dubron. Breaking ball on the outside part of the plate called strike. Uh, Trout, pretty good day. He's got the walk, the stolen base, two runs scored, the RBI double. It's one of the first pitch to hit that double. 
Here's the next delivery. Here's another base hit for him. Sharply hit on the liner. You know, bounce on out to Caesar, the center fielder. Trout on for the third straight time. Second hit today. And here's Albert Pujols, who's had a good ball game. He's made a conscious effort to let the ball get below the letters. And we know what happens when that barrel drops. It's quite dangerous. And the question has been asked to Mike Trout over and over again. What part of your game would you like to improve? Well, I need to lay off the high fastball. And it was a very interesting conversation between he and Ken Griffey Jr. About Ken Griffey Jr. saying the same thing. Yep, my mom used to tell me and call me on the phone and say, lay off the high fastball. <laughs> Look at the parallels here on two superstars, two young superstars. Getting the mom influence on pitch selection. There's a pitch that's a little bit low. Of course, we know when Griffey came into the scene, he was like Trout, an impact player immediately. One ball, no strikes. Pujols has driven in Trout a couple of times today. A pair of RBI singles. Angels need to get some runs. Trailing right now by five. It's 8-3 Cubs. Bottom of the fourth inning and the next pitch, that's ball two, two and oh. That's going to get the catcher Castillo out to have a quick visit with Dubron. That meeting wraps up. Will Farrell now headed to where we were yesterday, Salt River Fields. He's going to play for both the Diamondbacks and the Reds in their ball game. They started about an hour after we did today. Changed the start time to kind of fit everything in for uh, what Will Farrell is doing around the Cactus League. And, and after that game, we'll be playing in the Giants White Sox game and later on tonight, the Dodgers Padres night game. There's a pitch that's on the outside part of the plate. And Will Farrell, I recall, in fact, that he was a PA announcer for a Dodgers playoff game and announcing the lineup in a playoff game against the Cardinals a couple of years back. And when he announced the pitcher, Terry, he says, and the winning pitcher for today, Zach Granke warming up before the game. Uh, before the game started. <laughs> yeah. Here's a high pop out around the second base area. Under is the second baseman, Baez. Step back on the outfield grass. He'll retire Pujols. Not much going for the Angels here in the fourth inning against Felix Dubron. No runs. Angels had a two-out hit. No errors leave a runner on. So four have been completed. We're headed to the fifth inning. Angels trailing the Cubs by a score of 8-3 on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
don't forget the 20 game flex plan a great way to see angels baseball select the 20 games you want to see from a schedule that includes opening night premium matchups popular promotional giveaway nights buy your flex plan today at angels.com slash ticket plans or call 888-796-HALO so at the plate is matt caesar and the second pitch is a called strike he was taking it's nothing and two So, see what they've done here. Uh, Will Farrell last inning batted for Caesar. That, that was a freebie. Yeah, and now Caesar, uh, who technically shouldn't be batting here, is just going to bat. So we'll just kind of pick up things like Will Farrell never batted. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there, it, it's a movie, so it's all make believe. Like that. Uh, I guess, <laughs> including Mike Sush's uh, favorite five-man infield, but they're all on one side of the infield. Oh, Farrell. Uh, How about the K? That continues to follow uh, that spot, I guess. Yeah, Caesar just did the same thing <laughs> Farrell did for him last inning. He just struck out Oops. against Ryan Matthews for out number one. Chris Norfia will be the batter. And there's a pitch that misses. One ball, no strikes. Norfia has been up three times already. Single, walk, ground out. He's also scored a run. Matthews pitcher number five of the day for the Angels and we're only in the fifth inning and his next pitch that's popped foul on the first base side. Well a little different spin today here in the cactus leg. It's been quite entertaining. All the teams are trying to get to work in. Here's the pitch that's fouled back behind home. At least some of the teams that he still has to go through, they can kind of see what's coming. Yeah. Because we got information beforehand as to um, who Farrell had played for and who substituted, and now there's way more information, including because this game's televised. Well, the, the thing about it is the other three games he's going to appear in, in, in one of those games, he's going to end up pitching, oh. and he's going to have to catch. <laughs> And uh, he's got to play some infield. So, so far today, he's played short, second, first, center. Right. So he still has the corner outfield spots, pitcher and catcher. He still has, has to play some third base. Yeah, played second for Seattle, short for the A's, center field for the Angels, and first base for the Cubs. Here's the 3 2. And there's a one hopper that Ibar stops deep in the hole. His throw a little low. Albert tried to scoop it, but couldn't hold on. So we'll see how that one is scored. It's going to be an error on Ibar. It was a long throw, and Eric bounced it in. A lot of times, Albert uh, will pick that one. He almost uh, had it, but it skipped off the glove. So the first error today against the Angels. Ibar definitely had a. Um but he made a better throw, obviously. It was, was going to be an out. Not to say that it was a routine play. The one that time and time again we see Eric Ibar make. And one that a lot of shortstops don't even make the attempt to make. So the batter is Javier Baez. A couple flyouts and a single. Here's the pitch. And he chops that one over the mound. Charging is Rutledge. He has it. He applies to tag or did he they say no the throw to first was in time yeah they, they got him on the tag so that's going to be the inning at first uh, there wasn't a real indication whether or not he had tagged the runner going first to second they threw to first base that got the batter and eventually they said that he did get the tag on the base runner there to Norfia, so the inning is over so good play by uh, Redlich that will go down as a 4-3 double play in the inning no runs no hits one error and for the first time today the Cubs do not leave anyone on base we're moving to the bottom of the fifth 8-3 Chicago on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West
get ready to move to the Angels' bottom of the fifth inning. Will Farrell's day over. He is headed to his next ball game, as we mentioned, headed to Salt River Fields for the D backs Reds game. He, he keeps getting traded today, Jose. Yeah, he can't stay in one place. All right, can't stay in one uniform today. Here's the pitch. Grounded on the right side. It's a base hit. Off the bat of David Freeze, just out of the reach of the first baseman, Mike Bolt. And Freeze is on. There's a new second baseman in the game for the Cubs, Tommy Lestella, who was with the Atlanta Braves last year. Well, David Freeze continues to hit the ball with a lot of authority everywhere here in spring training. Good to see that foot strong, the minor surgery in the offseason. Good to see the hand that he got hit on last year. Stay as strong as he finished 2014. I borrow for one with a walk, pops one on the left side. The shortstop's going back and making the call and catches Russell in front of the left fielder, Junior Lake. Easy out there, one away. CJ Krohn will be the next batter. Today's game being brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts and CarQuest. Great people, great products, great prices. And for these Cubs, it seems like they have an up-and-coming good young player everywhere. Consider Bryant. You consider Starling Castro, who is a superb Major League player. Even though his production has dwindled a little bit the last couple of seasons, he is mighty talented. You have Rizzo, first baseman. You have Soler. You got Baez. And also now in the staff as an assistant hitting coach, uh, throughout the organization and Manny Ramirez who's also here in uniform and the reason he is here because he saw a lot of these young players in the minor league last year. There's a ball bounce right up the middle off the bat of Crone. It'll skip through in the center field. So a one out single puts runners at first and second. Crone continues to get his hits this spring and that'll bring up Colin Calgill. He's in the middle of the field. Excellent approach. He got a little too big that first at bat when he whiffed on a high fastball. Crone has shown excellent bat control throughout this spring. Mentioned Starlin Castro, their shortstop, who's not here today. He has had 846 hits already in his major league career in five seasons. And he's been a three time All Star. Young player, too. He is. And the pitch. That's another shot that's going to drop into center field for a base hit. Going into third, being waved around is Freeze. He'll score easily. Calgill wastes little time against Dubron with a one out RBI hit, his second hit of the day. And the Angels get a little closer. It's now 8 4 Cubs. Well, Colin Calgill making the most out of the situation where he was not even slated to play today. And of course, something that he's got to get used to during the regular season. Stay ready. Against lefties last year, 288. And that's what Mike Sosha found Calgill a lot of times to start him. Sometimes in place of a guy like Cole Calhoun early in the season. Here's the pitch, and that one is hit high in the air and hit deep into left field. Going back is Lake, and it's gone. A home run. Drew Butera, who hadn't had a hit all spring. Has had a double and now a three run homer, and the Angels are down by just a run. It's 8 7 Chicago. That one just kept carrying. Well, he was over. Got to see his favorite actor here in action today. And now he is on the board of the hits, RBI, sex for base hits. It's always a plus when you have a backup catcher that can go out there and uh, once in a while help you with a bat. Here's Rutledge at the plate. The Angels have quickly gotten right back into this ball game. And the first pitch on Rutledge, that's in there for a strike. Dubron had a relatively easy fourth inning against the Angels, but things kind of falling apart for him here in the fifth. Here's the next delivery. That's hit well in the center field. Caesar can go back on it, but this one's going to go over his head. And the ball's out on the warning track, stopping at second. And there with a one-out double already 
the fifth hit in the inning is Josh Rutledge. And the Angels are doing it quick in the count here against Dubron. Very aggressive. Yeah, I think that's a testament to what Don Baylor is just preaches. And guys, don't get into uh, overthinking. I mean, getting paralyzed by overanalyzing things. So, Rutherford, right once he saw him the first time, and he went through four hitters, allowed one hit to Trout in the fourth inning, his previous inning. Well, if he's jumping ahead with that fastball, and he's not throwing the best fastball early in the count, why waste it? Here's Calhoun. This could be his final at bat of the game. We'll see what Mike Sosha does as far as working in some of the reserves. Calhoun's 0 for 3 today. Goes after the first pitch and fouls that one off on the left side. Calhoun's one of those guys, Terry, that the last year just, the well, last year and a half has kind of spoiled us. When you see a lefty lefty matchup, it seems like, well, it's Cole Calhoun, so you don't have to worry too much about that. When he played just over half a season with the Angels. In 2013, he had way better numbers against left-handers than against right-handers, and that served to prove to Mike Socha, just leave him alone. Here he tips one foul, rolls over by the Angels coaching staff near the dugout. Cole Calhoun led all AL leadoff batters in homers, RBIs, and slugging percentage last year. So remember, he missed some time also because of an ankle injury. Going to the count on Cole Calhoun, who hadn't done a whole lot of leading off in the past, but has developed into one of the better leadoff batters in the AL. Here's the pitch. Line foul on the left side. That short, compact stroke of Cole Calhoun. He's one of those guys that um, saw his stock drop slightly just a couple of springs ago when a guy named J.B. Shuck surprised everybody and made the team as a non-roster player and more due to an injury to Cole Calhoun his back and then his hand and once Calhoun was back though it was uh, take no prisoners he was back all the way one ball two strikes to count on Cole Calhoun today's game being brought to you by In-N-Out Burger fresh cut fries from real potato shakes made with real ice cream, fresh toasted buns, and pure beef patties. That in and out, that's what freshness is all about. Why not stop in after today's game? Here's the one two. Calhoun with a bouncer on the right side. He's down over the third and flip to the pitcher. Dubron just gets there in time. So they get Calhoun on the ground out. It goes 3 1. First baseman to pitcher. Rutledge now at third. Mike Trout, the eighth batter up in the inning, will step up. And Trout's had a very good day. Two hits, two runs, driven in one. He's also had a walk and stolen a base. Well, gotta love days like this as a regular player when you can get four at bats and still not have to play the whole game. It's a wonderful thing. 22 hits combined, 11 per club, 15 runs combined. And what uh, looks more and more tear like a Cactus League game. Well, we got the tip off in the first inning today. There was a lot of stuff going on in that first inning. A lot of pitches thrown. And it really hasn't died down yeah. since. Ball finding holes. Your backup pitcher making an appearance in the first inning. Angels have Cesar Ramos up in the pen. And the delivery, that's a called strike on Trout. We're talking about the Cubs... Regular shortstop Starlin Castro a little bit earlier, and he's not here today. But I mentioned he's had almost 850 hits, and he's only 24 years old. Here's a pitch on Trout. That's lined in the left. That's another hit. That's going to tie up the game. It's coming in and scoring will be Rutledge, and Trout has an RBI double. That's the second one he's had today, and it's 8-8. Eight, eight. Oh, have a day, Mike. Um, times four, um, base four times, and then continues to go out there with a good plan. He looks like he's in mid-season form right now. The way he's swinging it out, a lot of thunder coming through the zone. The Angels have had six hits and five runs against Dubron. The RB Myers is going to come in to pinch run for Mike Trout. 
We've seen Mike Sosha do this a lot with Myers, who can really run the L.A. native. He's done a good job. He scored, he scored a lot of runs at the situations like this. Yeah. And he comes from a family of athletes, D.R.B. Myers. His cousin is Shaquille O'Neal. Believe it. Maybe we'll have Shaq uh, show up at an Angel Cactus League game. Here's the pitch. Albert skies one into center field. Caesar has a beat on it. Still back pedaling, and he will make the catch on that one. And that's how the inning will end. So it ends on the fly ball, routine fly ball to center. Nine batters step up for the Angels in the inning, and five of them score. Six hits in the inning, no errors, and one runner left. We are moving on to the sixth inning. This is anybody's ball game. We're tied at eight on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports website. Changes for the Angels will update you in just a moment. The new pitcher for the Angels is Cesar Ramos. So he replaces Ryan Matthews, who worked an inning and a third. He did not allow any hits or runs. Had a pair of strikeouts along the way. And here's the pitch from Ramos. That one is high and outside for a ball. Angels have a whole new look in the infield. Efren Navarro is the new first baseman. Johnny Giovatella is the second baseman. Sherman Johnson at third. And Taylor Featherston is now at short. And the outfield has a new look as well. Roger Kieschnick in left. The RB Myers in center. And Alfredo Marte is in right. 1-1 on Soler. He chops it right to Featherston. He's now at short. He's right on the money for the first out. The young kid can play a little bit. There's no doubt. He's fearless. That's what I'm getting from the Angels coaching staff. Um, the read they're getting on some of the intangibles that uh, Featherstone brings. Well, sir, we talked recently about the Angels bullpen where it's all efficiency over power. I mean, consider that, you know, Mike Sosha talks a lot about power arms, but right now he's got some guys that uh, may not be blowing up the radar guns, but they are very good at what they do, including a guy like Ramos Newcomer whose fastball averages just 90 miles an hour. And I say just only because, but 90 is pretty firm. Hey, there's some 91s that get on you, like they're 96, 97. Depends on who's throwing it. Here's the pitch, and there's a big cut and a miss by Mike Holt. Took a guy like Jared Weaver, and his fastball averaging just over 86 miles an hour, but it's 6 7 when it gets on the batter. Might be looking. 92-93 in reality. 
And the pitch that's a little bit inside. Now, in recent memory, the efficiency and power, you can put it all together. Just, uh, just remember the World Series and the Kansas City Royals. Kelvin Herrera, Wade Davis, and Greg Holland. What a trio. And on the next delivery, that one is taken for a called third strike. So polished off there is Ult. And that's what we're talking about. Two quick outs in the inning. 90 miles an hour, well located by Ramos. Chris Bryant will bat. Had a good day. Young player, only 23 years old. Very good prospect. Here's the pitch. And Skies going deep into left center field, chasing her both T. Snick and Myers. And that ball is going to get out a home run. Another homer for Chris Bryant. So just like that, the Cubs are back on top. His second home run of the day. Joe Madden's going to have a tough time keeping this kid out of the big leagues. I mean, he's come to camp with the attitude, with the focus, and the work ethic to just think one thing. I want to be in Chicago as soon as possible. And it's not by words, but by actions. He can really hit a baseball. So after fighting back to tie it with the five in the bottom of the fifth inning, Angels are behind once again down by a run. Yeah, that's what happens, too, when, uh, of course, <laughs> You don't have the 95 plus and you miss location. Pitch on its way. Hard hit. One hopper to right at short. Featherston has it. His throw will get Lake and the inning will end on a 6 3 ground out. So Ramos hits down three of four, but one of them got it out of the ballpark. One run, one hit. No errors and nobody left. Bottom of the sixth is coming up here in Tempe. 9 8 Cubs on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports Wits. So here in the bottom of the sixth inning, Efren Navarro will be the first batter up for the Angels. Left-handed hitter, and they still have Dupron in there, even though he got bounced around last inning. This will be his third inning uh, relief, and the pitch. That one is a pitch taken for ball one. It's one ball, no strikes. Navarro, he is hitting out a freezes spot. David Freeze today went one for three. There's a pitch that misses. 
Well, Terry, for a guy like Dubrov, it's a matter of going out there and getting your work in. Get those pitches that you need to finish off. Complete them. Bounce back. Next delivery. Hit high in the air and not too deep in center field. Waiting on it is Caesar, and he will make the catch in left center. Tomorrow, an easy out. Featherston will be the next batter. He's batting out of high bars, number five spot. Eric was 0 for 2 today. Featherston swings from the right side. Here's the pitch. That's right in there for a called strike. In the first week of games, he's already earned the label of a scrappy, hard nosed player. And also, they're very aware in game situations with very good instincts. It's like the Cubs have made a few moves defensively. We'll pick those up in just a moment. No balls, two strikes to count here on Taylor Featherston. CJ Crone, who is the DH today, he is still in the ball game. He's waiting on deck, and there's a the pitch that Featherston takes for a ball. One ball, two strikes. Here's the next one. And that's a breaking ball low. Two balls, two strikes. Nine eight in favor of the Cubs. And a ball game that's been going back and forth. Angels were down 1.83, but had the five runs last inning. Cubs have had a four run inning today. That was in their fourth. There's a breaking pitch that freezes. Featherston struck him out looking. So that's the second out. Dubron having a lot better success against the Angels this inning than last inning when he faced nine batters and gave up six hits and five runs. I think, if anything, this pitching coach, Chris Bosio, was over him and just said, hey, if you're going to throw that fastball, of course, first pitch, let's work on maybe locating it better. And if not, let's start mixing in some breaking balls early and then maybe finishing off the fastball. Crone's had a one for three days, singled his last time up, takes that pitch for ball one. Here he goes. He goes to the changeup first pitch. Get a feel for it. Next delivery. That one's hit well into left field. Going back is Lake still going back, and that one is gone. C.J. Crone has connected. That'll tie up the ball game. It's now 9-9. Talk about adjusting. Dubron not able to go out and repeat the pitches he made on the previous two batters. And also talk about adjusting on how the day started for C.J. Crone getting out of his zone with a high fastball and striking out in that first inning against Jason Hamill just kind of locking it down a little bit more. Way better pitch selection since then. Fly out to center. Single up the middle now. Another long home run for a man with very powerful hands and C.J. Crone. Second home run for him in the last three games. Here's the 1-0 on Sherman Johnson. It's a high chopper. It's hit out near second. This is a tough play. The throw is short. Late. Johnson legs out an infield hit. So he's aboard. The ball heads the ground the second time here in Arizona. When the heat is catching up here now, it's no chance. Johnson, a pretty good athlete himself, gets a good jump out of the box. So two outs. Jet Bandy is the batter. He's taken over for Drew Butera. Butera had a nice day today. Double, three-run homer, scored two runs, drove in three. Cubs have a new first baseman, Chris Valika. New catcher, Kyle Schrauber, as that pitch is swung on and 
That one is missed. The ball got away from that new catcher, Schwarber. So that's going to enable uh, Johnson, who represents the go-ahead run, to move up to second base. Nine-nine ball game. Angels and Cubs. Bottom of the sixth. Next delivery. This is popped up on the right side of the infield. This is going to be an easy play for the final out. Catch made by the first baseman, and that will do it. So Bandy is retired. So are the Angels. But the Angels get the tying run in on the grown homer. Two hits in the inning. No errors. And the Angels leave their eighth runner on base. We are set to move on to inning number seven. We're tied at nine in Tempe on the Angels. So we get ready to move to the seventh inning, and the Angels have decided to bring in a new pitcher. So a guy that we thought was in the game earlier, and he wasn't. We have two number 47s. So this is Ryan Matthews, who's wearing 47, and after Herman left the ball game. And that was after the fourth inning. Zach Stewart, the other uh, 47, was on the hill for the Angels. First batter up is Schwarber, their new catcher. And the pitch. Fly ball lifted in the air into left center field. Circling under is Kieschnick, and he will put that one away. That's the first out. Fans, don't forget, Angels baseball is back. Single game tickets for your defending American League West champions are on sale. Get your red on. Make plans to be at the Big A to watch the reigning American League MVP, Mike Trout. Rest of the Halos in 2015. Angels Stadium, the place to enjoy a night at the ballpark. We have friends and family. Purchase your tickets today. The Angels Stadium ticket office or online at angels.com. Addison Russell is the batter. And he's gone all the way for them so far. He's three for three. Done a good job with the glove as well at shortstop. This kid's got some abilities. Fun to watch. And you can see uh, the confidence that the Oakland A's saw. They knew they had to give up something valuable to get what they needed at the time of the trade. But this kid's got a bright future. 
Next pitch, checks the swing, fouls that one back. Top of the seventh inning being brought to you by Roto Rooter. Roto Rooter, a proud sponsor of Angels Baseball. Call Roto Rooter for any plumbing, drain, or sewer problems. Call 1 800 GET ROTO. Anderson Russell, also a good listener with Will Farrell, too, as he was coaching him at third base. Sure was. Out of his face. Here's done. There's a little pop up over on the first base side. The Angels second baseman Johnny Giovatello will call off that from Navarro. Make the grab on that one. And that'll be the second out. On the Jeep Out of Town scoreboards brought to you by the 2015 Jeep Cherokee. Advanced technology, safety, and capability for every road. Visit Jeep.com for more info. Cactus League. Texas up on a White Sox split squad 5-3 in the eighth inning. Adrian Beltre is first home run this spring. Tony Romo in uniform today for the Texas Rangers. The Dallas Cowboys quarterback in the dugout did not play in the game. So all kind of uh, unusual twist going on today in the Cactus League. I guess it couldn't be all about Farrell then. Yeah. Matt Caesar batting. And there's a pitch that is taken for a ball. Caesar Ramos, who worked last inning for the Angels, gave up one hit, one run. The home run he allowed to Bryant. He also struck out a batter. And the pitch has bounced by the mound and three in the center field. And that will be a base hit, two out single. Good day to have a bat on your hand. 27 hits combined now. 14 for the Angels, 13 for the Cubs. Rafael Lopez will be the batter. Rafael Lopez, not Ralph Lopez, though. Rafael Lopez. Okay, we're good. No, well, now we know Terry, all people right. by uh, so good. both names. <laughs> I'm just glad we have uh, the right pitcher out there on the mound right now, to be quite honest with you. The right left fielder finally. We cut on. There's a toss over to first base. I know there are a lot of players in spring training, so there are a lot of uh, numbers, but when you have two pitchers with the same number and they bear somewhat of a re resemblance to each other. Yeah, what happens is they bring players with the same numbers only because those players are in the minor league side of things and come in to fill in. And that's when really it gets a little uh, testy there. It's a little challenging at times. It's all part of the spring. Of course, not to disrespect anybody or any player, just the fact that sometimes it takes a little time to get, to get the information up here correctly. Here's the pitch, and that one is lifted in the air in the left field, going back and making a nice catch. He is Kishnik, and that will end the inning. So Matthews has a solid inning. He retires 3-4. No runs, one hit. No errors and one left. We have come to the seventh inning stretch today here in Tempe. And right now, it's a 9-9 ball game on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
pitcher in the ball game for the Cubs, Anthony Carter. And he is only their third pitcher of the day. Hamill worked three. Dubrod worked three. And now Anthony Carter takes over. Pitching change sponsored by Irvine Auto Center, where it's March Markdown Madness time. Huge markdowns in every Irvine Auto Center store. Shop online at IrvineAutoCenter.com or come visit them where the five meets the 405 at Lake Forest Drive in Irvine. And here's the pitch. Uh, first one is cut off by Giovatello, lifted into right center field. Hit pretty well. Chasing it down out there is the center fielder. Very nice running play and going off the sound of the bat and the crack of the bat there. We're anticipating that ball carrying a lot towards his glove side. And takes a nice route, makes the out. Anthony Almora running that one down out there in center field. He replaced. Matt Cesar. At the plate, Kieschnick goes out to the first pitch and bounces that one foul out of the reach of the first baseman, Laker. Mike Baxter is in right field for the Cubs. And they have Adron Chambers playing out in left field. Carter is set. Okay is the sign. Here's his pitch. And that one is taken for a ball. Carter borrowing a little page out of Dan Heron's book with that slight pause in his delivery. He was working from the stretch the whole time. He'll lift that leg up and just quickly stop and release on the go. Two balls and a strike. Pitch missed for a ball. Over Angel Dan Heron, now a member of the Miami Marlins. Yeah, there was some talk. He was thinking about retiring after uh, the Dodgers traded him. There's a ball low. So it's three and one. Dubront ended up going three innings, allowed nine hits, six runs earned. In walking, he struck out two, gave up a pair of home runs. Here's the next pitch. Hard hit and just foul on the first base side. This bottom of the seventh inning being brought to you today by Rotolo Chevrolet in Fontana, the number one Chevrolet dealer in California. Rotolo Chevrolet pursuing excellence every day, so visit them at Rotolo.com. Joe Madden, five year contract. John Lester, six year contract. He inherits a very rich farm system. A lot of fine players. This is a team that. Uh, had only 61 wins in 2012, 66 wins in 2013, and 73 wins Terry last year. So, as Theo Epstein clearly said, now it's not about developing or stocking, it's about winning. We expect to contend. Five straight years they've been in the cellar in the central. There's ball four on Kieschnick. But if there's ever been a Guy in recent years in baseball known as a turnaround artist. It's uh, Joe Madden. And they think he's the right guy at the right time with a lot of young talent moving up to the majors now with the Cubs and probably the best farm system in baseball. Well, Joe Madden, even though he's never won a World Series, has as many World Series appearances as, as Mike Sosha does. There's a pitch that's low. He was one of those guys that when he was, of course, with the Angels, served so many roles from instructor to scout to bench coach. To, you name it. Hitting instructor. I mean, so many things. He was um, one of the guys that uh, was most influential in, in making Troy Percival a pitcher and converting him from catching to pitching. Time call. Myers backs out of the box. Well, Joe has as many... World Series appearances as Mike Socia as a manager, but uh, of course Mike uh, had some as a player as well. Well, you can't compare Joe Mad didn't play in the big well, so, I mean, he, he tried to get there though. Of course, yeah. but as a manager, consider what Joe Madden did with the team and the finances, and the challenging situations in Tampa Bay to get that team to the World Series. Oh yeah, I mean, the job he did at 
I was talking to some Cubs people before the ball game today. You could argue when Joe Madden took over the Rays and he ended up being there for nine years and took them to a number of postseason appearances four times in nine years. They went to the playoffs. But when he took over that team, and there's a punt by Myers on the first base side. It's stopped by the first baseman, Valeka, and then he shovels the ball over to Carter, and they get the speedy Myers on the play, moving up to the second out, two outs is Kieschnick. But back to uh, Joe Madden when he was with the Rays. When he took that team over, they might have been the biggest laughing stock in all of professional sports. No kidding. Not just baseball, hands down in baseball, but you could argue in the other major sports in this country, there was no team further down in the doldrums, if you will, than Tampa Bay. Ball, of course, is part of a tremendous team with Andrew Friedman and all the people in the front office in getting the right pieces there in a very unconventional way, by the way, which is what is even more remarkable. Yeah, as good a manager as Lou Pinella was, he wasn't able to turn things around there in Tampa Bay. Right. But Joe Madden did. And now you talk about uh, who would hire Joe Madden is Theo Epstein, who was the guy that turned things around in Boston after 86 years and getting the World Series. Yeah. And he almost hired Joe when he eventually decided on uh, Terry Francona to take over the Thank Red Sox. Joe was kind of the runner-up for that yeah. spot. They didn't really know much about him. They were so impressed when he interviewed for the vacancy there at Boston when Theo Epstein was running the show at Fenway that they never forgot Joe Madden. And they were hoping maybe now the second time is the charm. With the departure of Andrew Freeman to the Dodgers, that pretty much did it. As Joe opted out of his contract. And Joe traveling in his RV. Understand that uh, <laughs> the first meeting happened in the RV with a five dollar bottle of wine. Well, they, they <laughs> rendezvous. Joe had uh, left Tampa Bay and they met him at an RV park. In, uh, he was with his wife and his on his uh, recreational vehicle. And that's where they first interviewed him. That was this past offseason. Of course, they had interviewed him in the past when they were with the uh, Red Sox, Theo Epstein. Two and two is the count here on Alfredo Marte. He's batting with two outs. We're in the bottom of the seventh. A 9-9 game. A hit could give the Angels the lead. The Angels have had a brief lead today. That was 3-2 to two way back in the second inning. And from that point on, it's either been the Cubs on top or a tie ball game like we have right now. The very pool happy Alfredo Marte. Steps out of the batter's box time called. Fans live Angels baseball back in 2015. MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. And we'll tell you more about it after the next pitch. Here's the payoff. And this one is hit on a high hop to third. Stopped by the third baseman at the throw by Candelario is in time to get Marte and that will end the Angels bottom of the seventh. Don't forget MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected with live radio broadcasts. That's breaking news and more. Download MLB.com at bat at the number one app for live baseball. Angels fail to score in the seventh. We're headed to the eighth tied at night on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Angels make a pitching change. Eighth inning we go. And left-hander Greg Maley will take over. And he spells his last name M-A-H-L-E. Had a 1-2 record in 23 games in the minors last year. 2.65 ERA. He's a guy who kind of whips it in there, Jose, from see the uh, left side. Now they see that. Pretty good numbers last year in the minor leagues. Not very tall. And we'll see that whip in action here very soon against the lefty immediately. Here's the first pitch. And that one is a little bit low and outside on Tommy Lestella. Paul Terry last year in the interleague when the Angels went to Atlanta. This kid looked really good. Fine player. And before you know it, he's not part of the future with the Braves. Yeah. Now kind of a changing of the guard in their front office from a year ago. And the Braves uh, very active in the offseason. Here's the next pitch, and Maley delivers that one for a strike two and one. You don't see that many drop down lefties like Maley's bringing it right here. Maley, from a distance, although he doesn't throw the same way, get to it after the pitch, and that one is inside. But he kind of reminds you, uh, looking at him out at the mound, being a left hander, reminds you a little bit of uh, Michael Roth. Sure does. Looks like him a little bit, but uh, totally different. Uh, style of pitching even though both are left-handers here's one grounded on the first base side stuff by Navarro so he gets to the bag in time for the out well, also hopefully better results from Maley from the Angels when he eventually gets to the big leagues than what the Angels got from Michael Roth who is no longer with the organization so Maley ends up replacing Matthews who worked the seventh inning Christopher Lake is the batter. There's the pitch, and this one is chopped short. Love there by Featherston. And he throws in plenty of time for the second out. It's a pretty good job coming out and getting the baseball by Taylor Featherston. And nothing will make a young pitcher come out and get some confidence quickly. Number one, by helping yourself and throwing strikes. When you come in this late to a game where you're supposed to be one of these fill-in guys. And then to have guys defensively help you out. Chambers will be the next batter. And this is his first time up. Maley waiting for Chambers to get set in the batter's box. I'm watching Chambers come up to hit a quick uh, flashback of a good friend that just retired, Juan Pierre. Yeah. Here's a pitch that is taken for a strike. Let's pause for stations to identify themselves on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Terry Smith, Jose Moda, Darren Chan, our producer engineer. Great to be with you for Angels baseball. Had a nice crowd on hand today. Yet to get the official attendance for this Thursday afternoon affair. Uh, they've been packed in here today. 1-1 pitch, and that's waved at and missed. So Chambers is quickly in the hole, 1-2. and two. Great job pitching ahead, spraying the zone. Not very easy to pick up the baseball from where he's coming from. That was a very uncomfortable swing there by Chambers. Can spread the zone way more now. And trying to bunt that one with two strikes and not even coming close to hitting it is Chambers struck him out. And that's how the inning will end. So an impressive inning for Maley as he retires all three in a row. They didn't get the ball out of the infield. The top of the eighth inning was brought to you by Chronic Tacos Mexican Grill using third-generation recipes and packed with your favorite fresh ingredients. That's Chronic Tacos for a location near you. Go to eatchronictacos.com and live the taco life. We are headed now to the bottom of the eighth inning. And we're tied at nine in Tempe on the Angels Baseball Radio Network. And...
New pitcher in the game for Joe Madden's Cubs. Joe Ortiz will take over. A little left-hander. He only goes about 5'7". And we saw him in the past with the Texas Rangers. He was involved in a motorcycle incident. And uh, it was during a winter ball last offseason. Motorcycle ran over his foot, broke his left foot, and he pretty much missed most of last season. Cole talking to Josh Hamilton about this kid. And Josh was uh, one of the Texas Rangers. He goes, man, I, he's one lefty, really, I don't want to face. Efren Navarro, left-handed batter, is facing him here, and the count, two balls, one strike. What Josh mentioned was what he remembered from spring training when he was with the Rangers on Ortiz and how he could not pick up the baseball. Not a big size, stocky guy, and Terry really is good to see him back on his feet and more importantly on the mound of the baseball diamond. And he's kind of uh, about the same height as a Tim Collins with the Kansas City Royals, another lefty reliever, but he's a little stockier than Collins. And Tim Collins also uh, having some health issues. Yeah. 2-2 pitch. That breaking ball freezes. Navarro struck him out looking. Ortiz replacing Carter, who worked last inning against the Angels. He set down three out of four with a walk. Ortiz there, fourth pitcher of the day. The bottom of the eighth being brought to you by Rotolo, Chevrolet, and Fontana. Number one Chevrolet dealer in California, Rotolo Chevrolet. They're pursuing excellence every day, so visit them at Rotolo.com. It's a good time to bond right here. And the first delivery is his Featherston. He swings and misses. That went for strike one. Saw Featherston get in the box and take a look at the third baseman. Condolari was just about two steps behind the bag. Here's the next pitch. It's lifted high in the air into left field, but it's hanging up for Chambers. Left fielder. Put that one away for the second out. Two up, two gone. Talking about Joe Madden, the Cubs' first year manager. First visit here in 10 years after uh, nine seasons of spring training with the Rays as their manager. And uh, Joe, yesterday before their game against the Dodgers, they were winless. They did end up posting a victory against the Dodgers 4-3. to three. But uh, Joe Madden was... Uh, Kind of unhappy with his club. He was telling reporters that he was not happy with the Cubs' breakdowns on fundamentals, errors, mental mistakes, base running issues. And, uh, you know, Joe's normally very upbeat. You don't hear a whole lot of that stuff from him, but he wanted to send a message to his team yesterday. They responded with the win, and they've uh, put nine runs on the board here today. Yeah, Terry, Joe's also uh, very methodical on when those messages have to come out. That's why the communication issues with his players, a lot of former players tell me he's excellent. They don't all agree with what he does, like any player doesn't agree with his manager all the time, but they respect him. There's a lot of players that thought maybe they shouldn't be in a platoon. They were, but it worked out for their team. They were fine with it. Pinch hitter Grant Green just pops the ball into shallow right. It's going to fall in, and he's going to hustle up to second base, and he is there with a two-out double. Wasn't hit all that hard. He placed it perfectly. And he realized Listella, the second baseman, was in pursuit. So that kind of opened things up a little bit there at second base. And he hustled to get a hustle double. A lot of times we talk about how a catcher thinks he maybe goes up to a certain hitting situation. And how to approach it. Well, here's a second baseman thinking like a second baseman on when that ball dropped. Understanding what it took to get that ball, retrieve it, and get it in back into the infield. Alex Yarbrough is going to bat. Green was pinch hitting for Cowgill. And now Yarbrough is going to pinch hit for Sherman Johnson, who had been uh, playing third base. Pitch on Yarbrough. And the switch hitter takes that one for ball. One and one the count. I don't note on Joe Madden uh, while his club was going through a week without a win here in Cactus League play as Yarbrough bounces that one foul. He said to his players the other day, and they weren't scoring runs. They weren't getting people on base. He was saying, uh, kind of joining around with his players, let's get some people on base today so we can work on our signs. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep it as loose as possible for everyone. Next delivery. That one's a little bit high for ball. Uh, T-shirts printed about the 90 feet. 
the effort to give you 90 feet takes no talent, pretty much, is the message. There's the pitch. It's low. It skips between the legs of the catcher, and that one's going to go back to the backstop. So moving on to third base will be Grant Green. He represents the go-ahead run here with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. 9-9 nine -nine game. We go Angels with an excellent opportunity here to capitalize on what they have going on and try to get a W here in camp. Schwarber had that one uh, roll between his legs. It will be scored a wild pitch. Here's the next delivery, and that is a pitch that didn't miss by much. Boy, a breaking ball. It's ball four. That could have been a called third strike right there. That was very close, trying to get the backdoor call. and uh, Maybe a little low. Yeah. Good job by another Southern California, Rob Drake, behind the plate today. So here's Bandy stepping up, Jet Bandy, Angels catching prospect. He could give the Angels the lead here with a two-out hit. Here's the pitch, and that one misses for a ball. Fans, connect with your Angels on social media. Like the Angels on Facebook. Follow the Angels on Twitter and Instagram. Also, you can find out how to follow your favorite players at angels.com slash connect. Here's the next pitch, and Mandy took a cut at that breaking pitch and misses it. Ortiz fastball slider pitched in triple A last year. He's ready, and the next delivery, Bandy with a bouncer deep in the hole. It's short, long throw, and he's going to go to second, and it's late, and the go ahead run scores. Well, Herrera, the new shortstop, saw that it was going to be a low throw to first, so he thought, well, I'm not going to get him there. I better try it second, and the throw was late. Oh, this is where the shortstop, you know how far you have to go. One, two, three, four, five steps. Figuring out, well, my best play is second base. And outstanding effort by Yarbrough in sliding in and not giving in on the play, hustling all the way. Talk about running 90 feet. That was the difference right there and why the Angels got that run. So Bandy will get an infield RBI single. And the Angels are on top in this game for the first time since the second inning. It's 10-9. On a play like that, it all starts with a good secondary lead. And anticipate that you do not want to be the guy that closes out the inning because he did not hustle getting into second base. Great job. Giovatella will be stepping up. Here's the pitch, and that one is low. So we'll see if the Angels can protect the lead in the ninth inning. It's been a bit of a problem this spring. The Angels have had four losses this spring, and every one of them has been hit by either two runs or one run. Terry, it can be done. Yeah. Here's the pitch. Uh, cut and a miss, 101. As Mike Socha says, yeah, at some point it gets to where we want to see guys that are maybe as he called the other the peripheral guys come out and show us what they can do Stephen Hensley and Edgar Ibarra are the two pitchers still listed to see action here today so we'll see what the Angels elect to do the pitcher who was in last inning Greg Maley uh, did a good job but probably one and done for him two balls one strike you get late in these games and uh, Generally, you have a lot of young players on the field, position players and pitchers. There's one fouled off on the right side, back and out of play. Angels right back at it here tomorrow afternoon as the Halos will take on the San Diego Padres. Two teams will meet during the regular season this year with the Angels playing in early games against the National League West. Angels will actually play the Padres at the Big A on the 25th, 26th, and 27th of May. Well, what a pitcher Tyson Ross has become. We'll see him tomorrow. There's a swing and a miss by Gia Vitelli. He was fooled on that one, struck him out, and that's how the inning will end. But the Angels do push across the go-ahead run. One run, two hits. 
in the inning, a walk, no errors, and the Angels end up leaving a pair. So we'll get into the ninth inning. It's a 10-9 Angels lead on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. So the top of the ninth, the 10-9 Angels lead. Top of the ninth inning being brought to you by Rotolo Chevrolet in Fontana, the number one Chevrolet dealer in California. Rotolo Chevrolet pursuing excellence every day, so visit them at rotolo.com. Angels go to the bullpen again and bring in their ninth pitcher of the day. This is Alex Sanabia. He has pitched in the big leagues in the past with the Marlins. Parts of three seasons, 2010, 2011, 2013. And the Angels signed him as a free agent during the offseason. He's a right-hander out of Chula Vista. So Sanabi is ready to go. And here's his first pitch. That one uh, pitch taken for a called strike. Jamer Candelario is the batter. He swings from the left side. He replaced Chris Bryant at third base. And boy, Bryant had a big day. The young 23-year-old third base prospect for the Cubs. He was three for four, pair of homers, three RBIs. Here's the next delivery, and Candelario looks at fly ball to center, but the RB Meyer is right there to squeeze it. One gone here in the ninth. So Nabi, a fast worker, fastball, slider, kind of a cut fastball he'll throw and a changeup. Mike Baxter is the batter. And this is his first time up today. Baxter hitting out a junior lake spot. Left-handed batter. Pitch on Baxter. And that one is in there. Jose is on his way downstairs to get ready to chat with Angels manager Mike Sochi after this ball game. Here's the next pitch. That is a little bit outside for a ball. Today's attendance, we mentioned the it appeared to be the biggest crowd this spring here at Tempe Diablo, and sure enough, 8,472. Very good crowd. There's a high fly ball lifted into left field. Chasing hard is Keishman. Foul ground under. He'll make the grab. That's a second out in the ninth. One more out to go. Kyle Schwarber is the next batter. The catcher 
And he's been up once without a hit today. A lot of players used in this one today for the Angels and Cubs, including Will Farrell playing for each team. The actor comedian played some center field for the Angels, played some first base for the Cubs. The pitch in there, coach third base for the Cubs. Handled a ball that bounced out to him in center field while he was playing out there for the Angels. And struck out the only time he batted. That was as a member of the Cubs. And that was against Zach Stewart. No balls, two strikes, and Abia trying to get the final out and the 0-2 delivery. Skied in the air into right center. This should do it. Myers is under, waiting. He'll squeeze it, and the ball game is over. So after a long day today here in Tempe, the Angels come back with a victory as they beat the Cubs today by the final score of 10 to 9. Angels ended up banging out 15 hits in today's ball game. Cubs had 13 hits. Along the way, the Angels had two home runs. One from Drew Butera, the other one from C.J. Crone. And the Cubs today, uh, they had some home runs as well. Chicago hit three of them in a losing cause, including a pair from their second baseman, Chris Bryant. So a long day of baseball ends here in Tempe. And the Angels can celebrate a victory, now evening up the Cactus League record at 4-4. Four and four. The Cubs record drops to 1-7-1. And one. Sure, uh, Mike Sosh is probably going to say something to uh, Joe Madden before uh, he leaves. Joe is being interviewed now by the uh, Cubs media over on the third base side. And Mike Sosh should be joining Jose in just a moment. And we'll get some of his comments on the Angels' victory here today. So let's go down to Jose Moniz with Mike Sosh. Thanks a lot, Terry. Well, Mike, a uh, different type of day for sure. And uh, before we get into the serious baseball stuff, how pleased were you with the fact that Will Ferrell comes aboard? <laughs> they prep you for it, and it's all about a good cause. You know, um, yeah, I think for a good cause, it's fun. It's a little bit distracting, but we were, you know, but we were expecting it, and we were good. So, you know, we'll see what's up, we'll keep up. Um, so, you know, we were, uh, it was kind of, it was a lot of fun. I mean, we're huge Will Ferrell fans, and, and the, the guys in the dugout, they loved it. And when he held that, uh, I think it was Castillo, was single, that was some kind of play. Those guys were loving it. Get to Sean Newcomb and what you saw from him, obviously, um, you know, a little rattled young pitcher. He had him on a pitch limit, obviously, he got up there. But from something like this, what is it that he can learn that you guys can encourage for him? Well, you know, it's a big arm in, in Sean, and I think the fact that he got out there and he's starting to see some major league hitters, starting to taste the crowd in a ball game, you know, he's got Albert and the guys behind him. I think that's important. Uh, his stuff is real. It plays. Uh, you know, they had four broken bat base hits in the first inning, and uh, and and uh, you know, I had to do his pitch count, but but he's going to be fine. Update on Matt Joyce, who was scratched lately. Yeah, he just had a little tight hamstring. We're not going to we're not going to play around with it this early in camp. Well, you know, this was April first. He'd be playing to try to get ready for the season. But right now, we'll give him another day to stretch out, and uh, hopefully, he'll be out there tomorrow. All right, thank you. All right, Jose, thank you. Terry, back to you. All right, thank you. the Angels come away with a comeback victory. You always like those. The Halos over the Cubs today, ten to nine. For those of you watching on TV, Jose along with Patrick O'Neill. We'll have a lot more post-game analysis. We'll have more for you on the radio side from Tempe as well. This is the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.